What's going on, my fellow A Plusers? Welcome back once again to a brand new episode of A Plus More Phenomenal, your weekly stop for your Power Rangers, Common Rider, Super Sentai, and Tokusatsu news and reviews right here on our YouTube page. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for certainly joining us today. It is I, your more phenomenal host, as always, Adam Perez, certainly back once again with another live episode for you guys today, as we're going to get into a ton of news for you guys. And not only do we have Power Rangers Dino Fury episode number five to go ahead and dive into winning at Attitude, if I'm not mistaken, is in fact the title this week. Uh, but we also got a ton of tokusatsu news in regards to Kamen Rider, Zenkaiger, and a ton more for you guys here today as well. So should be a certainly a packed episode and certainly a fun one to certainly discuss and talk with you guys. But hopefully everybody's weekend has certainly started off right wherever you are around the world. Uh, hopefully kicking off right with getting a little bit of Dino Fury uh, in your life, honestly. Five weeks uh, five weeks into this series, and I got to tell you, man, I, I look forward to every Saturday uh, so far to be quite honest with you guys and we wind up having ourselves yet another solid episode here this week that we're going to be diving into guys um, but before we do um i'd love to go ahead and give some shout outs to everybody that's certainly uh joining us live as always and of course if you are joining us live guys hit that like button hit that big thumbs up it definitely goes a long way we got johnny marrero in the house what's going on buddy good to see you in here man aj certainly in here as well dino knights fight for your rights uh i, I believe they said that dino knights might have actually have been the original um or was might have been the title for this season so uh if only if only uh what's up jordan thank you very much for certainly coming through he says the full team morph was awesome uh yeah it's, it, it certainly was i definitely agree with you there uh adrian what's going on brother appreciate appreciate you uh stopping by today as always i'm handsome dude is in the house with us today uh we've got uh power rangers legacy you know what time it is it's morphin time uh we're gonna be getting into a ton of power ranger talk for you guys today also alexis thank you very much for certainly joining us today uh frankie's in the house house as well thank you frankie for coming through jb says what uh is here as well man so thank you very much it's good to see you as always buddy blossom thank you very much for coming through it was good to see you l'oreal uh who else we got in here Jaden, what's up Jaden grows by becky barnes yes another uh another stellar um episode in regards to writing goes um all and becca are definitely redeeming themselves i feel like in the eyes of fans uh so who else we got here uh i'm just gonna call you 88 what's up 88 uh <laughs> um uh, Izzy is definitely the series' favorite. Great for the Olymp uh, Special Olympics to be uh, a part of this. Absolutely. I love the fact that Simon Bennett reached out and uh, wind up uh, able to get uh, Sarah Dalton in here. Uh, Indy, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you, man. Um, for those of you who don't know, Indy Uchiha, uh, over on A Plus Hero Report side of things. Uh, he's also not only a great reviewer, but also a great musician. Uh, this guy actually is a rapper himself. He wind up actually dropping his second album uh, as of yesterday, Hits. Uh, so go ahead and check him out. Indy Uchiha, man, uh, if you guys haven't had the opportunity to listen to some of his music. Edward Sanchez Productions. What's up, Eddie? Good to see you in here, man. Uh, Isaiah's joining us today, as always. Uh, Skinny Boys in the house. He said, fun fact, the guy who played Casey from Jungle Fury, Jason Smith, actually voiced the uh, the monster uh brian was it brian brian stone brian something this week uh but yeah it was uh jason smith from uh jungle fury that went ahead and uh and and uh and voiced them uh video dvds in the house what's up uh, video i appreciate you coming through as always uh ranger toa another uh green ranger himself finally coming through good to see you in here as well uh let's see here who we got a lot of fresh faces guys all i'm i'm love to see all the fresh faces in here honestly uh video games lover 58 says i just finished it don't worry i just finished it also the second second time second viewing to certainly say the least uh marcelino what's up appreciate you coming through he says once again you haven't shaved your head well i got a little bit of a i got a little bit of a a, a fade kind of going i did get a little bit of a cleanup as of yesterday charles what's up jamaican in the house what's up charles good to see you in here man uh what else who else we got in here sunny shield certainly coming through as always shadow nova productions in the house as well guys I, I'm, I'm feeling the love today i'm feeling the love today red is not a flavor in the house of so i Ryan Blast, that's what it was. Thank you very much, Johnny Marrero. So yes, Jason Smith from Jungle Fury went ahead and actually voiced uh, uh, Ryan uh, Brian Blast this week for you guys. And of course, we got anime in the house as well. Um, he says, I'm curious about how will the Gold Ranger appear? I don't know, but it seems like we're probably getting ourselves 
rather close, ladies and gentlemen. I'm certainly excited to see the addition of the uh, the Sixth Ranger here. Hopefully we get him before the hiatus. We'll see, guys. We definitely will tackle that uh, very topic here uh, today. Uh, before we get into our main topics and dive into uh, Dino Fury, you know we got to keep the lights on around here, guys. So if you just embellish me for a couple of minutes. Uh, if you guys do want to go ahead and continue to support our channel um, in other ways, you certainly can. We do have ourselves a Patreon account that you can go ahead and certainly join if you'd like to. Um, check us out over at patreon.com slash a plus opinions uh, we've got three different tiers one dollar tier five dollar tier and ten dollar tier we've got early access videos exclusive videos and content uh audio video uh, audio i should say to all of our videos that we wind up posting along with the discord community uh in the one dollar tier if you guys want to go ahead and join us over there to further talk not only power rangers but Marvel, DC, movies, television, whatever you guys certainly love. So go ahead and check it out. Patreon.com slash A plus opinion. See if it's something that interests you. If you want to go ahead and support the channel that way. If for some reason you can't support the channel monetarily, the best way to go ahead and do that, guys, hit that like button, hit that big thumbs up, and of course, share our videos and certainly subscribe to the channel. So uh, that definitely does go a long way, guys. So thank you for your continued support each and every week. Um, and if you guys do have any live viewer questions, we will be getting to your viewer questions towards the end of the episode uh feel free to go ahead and submit them over to a plus more phenomenal at gmail.com you can go ahead and start submitting them over at any particular time uh today during the week whatever the case may be we definitely will be tackling your questions just in case if i can't get to them in the comments if you want to make sure that your question gets answered live on air again go ahead and submit that over to a plus more phenomenal at gmail.com and we'll go ahead and get you guys taken care of for sure uh, and of course is once we have um uh, if we end up having any new stragglers that wind up uh, joining into uh, the live chat. Certainly just make everybody feel welcome and at home for sure. Um, all right, guys. Let's go ahead and start diving into our week's episodes. First and foremost, Dino Fury. Episode number five has, in fact, dropped winning attitude. Uh, we wind up having a special guest here in special Olympian, um, Sarah Dalton. Uh, I believe she said even in this episode that she ran the 1500 meter um, uh, race in the Olympics. Um, you know, not, not to brag or anything, but no, I'm just kidding. I can't brag. But I used to take track back in high school. Absolutely loved it. It was a little bit of a uh, cross country or not necessarily cross country, but more or long distance runner to certainly say the least. So it's really cool to kind of see um, them really have not only somebody in Izzy that loves track and feels clearly, uh, but also having Sarah represent the Special Olympics and um, you know those with the intellectual disabilities and things like that. And really being able to continue to show representation. Like one of the things that I continue to love about Power Rangers, and I'm so thankful that a showrunner like Simon Bennett understands is that, you know, everybody comes in all shapes, different sizes, different ethnicities, whatever the case may be. Um, and the fact that they are really taking uh, the initiative to make everybody feel sort of included into this season um, and understanding the importance of what it means to be able to be represented and see yourself on screen, uh, I think really, really goes a long way. Uh, I mean, so for anybody that out there that, you know, it's interesting too, because I used to have a friend, uh, Marilyn, back in the day, um, who's, uh, whose brother was disabled, and he he too used to go ahead and compete. I don't know if it was a Special Olympics per se, um, like, the, like the World Games, if you will, but I do believe that they have other sort of smaller Special Olympics Olympics, maybe around the world that you can certainly uh, participate in. But I, I do remember him um, being active in that in Maryland, always helping him train and, and, and helping him push, you know, push him during competitions and things like that. So it, it's really cool to be able to see just that side of our society just showcased on screen and really highlighted to its finest. Like I didn't know what to expect from Sarah Dalton in here who plays Lily, um, but she was just a fantastic sort of addition to this episode, man. Like honestly, it just made me smile the entire time in there. She, she did really good job in regards to like acting and just performing and things like that even though i i'm pretty sure it's not her her regular field you know what i mean um but to be able to come in and join a power rangers series it just honestly felt like for me her chemistry with izzy uh, and uh, Tessa Rao, I thought was just was absolutely brilliant. And it definitely did come across on screen just really well. So shout out to Sarah Dalton for just doing an amazing job as Lily uh, and just really continuing to show why Power Rangers is, is truly for everybody and why everybody should certainly feel included when it comes to uh, Power Rangers. So I, I just thought that was just some really powerful stuff that we wind up seeing. Um, 
for this particular episode, though, we do see that our Rangers are, in fact, trying to um, discover the other Zords, right? Now that we have our new recruits here in the Black and Green Ranger for Izzy and Javi, they're really the only two that don't have their Zords. And so we do see them uh, in the command center with some um, incredible graphics, mind you, uh, in regards to bringing up like this tabletop hologram of the city or the forest that they're in uh, in order to go ahead and um, try and locate where some of their Zords certainly are. So um, that definitely is in the background of this story here this week. Uh, but we really get the opportunity to focus on on Izzy, who really wants to go ahead and win this sort of cross country race that she winds up um, uh, joining here this week. So not only does she have a coach in her father, but she also has a coach uh, in Lily, who who has the gold medals to prove that she's good at what she certainly does. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, is certainly there to go ahead and help Izzy out. <laughs> but we clearly immediately get the opportunity to see just who the competition is for Izzy. And that is, in fact, the newcomer in Fern. Uh, I'm assuming she's a newcomer to the school or whatever the case may be. Uh, and uh, I got to tell you, Tessa Rao has the best stink eye and mean mug in the business. Uh, I mean, that, the look that she gave that girl as she was riding, as she was running past, I'm like, yeah. Izzy, Izzy means business. Izzy definitely means business, right? You can't prove you're the best unless, or was it without winning or something like that? Or you, you got to win or whatever the slogan was that her and her father wind up sort of coming up with. It almost reminded me of Talladega Nights, right? If you ain't first, you're last. Uh, and it's not, maybe not that competitive, but you can clearly see that there definitely is a competitive spirit uh, towards Izzy. And we even got to see that a little bit too when it comes to uh, the previous episode, right? Like the, the little mean mugs and the idea of her being uh, really proud of herself and the idea of wanting to train, wanting to compete, wanting to be the best and win sort of thing. That mentality goes back to the previous episode when we saw Zato trying to uh, interview her, right? She's clearly in her own in her own mindset, right? Got the head, headphones on, doesn't really want to be bothered, clearly focused, right? Seems to know that what she's doing um, so that, that mentality definitely kind of carries over, uh, into this episode as well. And, and, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't say she came across as like, um, well, I, I'll get to that here in just a, in a second, but I, I really love just kind of seeing the competitive side of, of Izzy, maybe to the point of a little bit too much, right? The idea of her being upset at what Lily wind up having to do. I think she's, I think Lily said she was maybe like 30 minutes late uh, for helping Izzy train. Uh, Izzy clearly took that personal, um, not really even giving Lily the opportunity to fully explain herself. The fact that Lily went ahead and helped somebody else who was currently uh, in a terrible situation, I believe it was Mona that maybe broke her leg or something like that, went and took her shopping to try and help her out as much as she possibly could. But Izzy honestly didn't even let her get the opportunity to explain it. Like you can tell Lily was trying to explain exactly what the situation was, but Izzy just was not having it. Didn't even take the drink or the smoothie, uh, the protein or whatever the, that uh, that uh, Lily was trying to give her. So she definitely had some attitude to certainly say the least. But I, I just love the message that we got this week of, you know, winning isn't everything. There are there are more important things in life uh, like health helping people. And that's absolutely the case. And I feel like, especially these days, I feel like as a society, maybe we have become very selfish in a sense, um, kind of looking more inward and how are we going to get ourselves across that finish line when it comes to the life that we live. And I think sometimes we forget the idea of helping people is just as important, right? It's not necessarily the idea of having to get ahead of everybody, but maybe help pretty much lifting everybody up so that we, we, we all cross this finish line together. You know what I mean? And so I love that idea that there's nothing wrong with being competitive. There's nothing wrong with wanting to win, but when winning becomes the only thing that you're focused on and you forget about the people around you, um, that's when it becomes dangerous. And that's when it becomes something that's uh, just makes you look like an asshole. You know what I mean? And so uh, I'm really glad that that Lily winds up expressing that um, that sentiment here because it works. It, it works fantastically well for Izzy, who has that moment of hesitation where, yeah, I do have this huge lead, but this poor woman who, mind you, is her stiff competition in Fern, right? The, the, the ability to stop yourself and realize that somebody needs help uh, and going ahead and, and helping her out despite the fact that you now know that you're going to lose, uh, I think is a really powerful message at the end of the day that it's not always about you, right? It is about other people and the idea of helping others uh, uh, over yourself. And so I really love the message that was uh, delivered here. And, and I honestly didn't even feel like it was too much in your face. It just felt like a really natural lesson for somebody like Izzy 
Izzy to certainly learn considering the fact of how competitive of a person that she certainly is, right? And I'm pretty sure we'll learn. Uh, I mean, we even got that episode for Kai very early on, you know, um, in, in his in his own way, his own little life lesson, if you will. Um, but um, I really enjoyed this episode. I, and I also appreciated the fact that uh, Warden Buzzkill or Warden Garcia here, um, the fact that he supports his daughter, right? Like there could be like th that father out there that just absolutely wants his daughter to win and only wants him to win. Uh, and, you know, probably would have left that other person behind that was certainly hurting. You know what I mean? Uh, but the fact that Warden Garcia here um, congratulated his daughter, made her understand that you did the right thing, right? You made the right choice uh, in helping somebody else over yourself. Uh, I, I thought really speaks wonders to have a, a, a parent figure like that support your child in, in doing a good deed for people, right? Not enough good Samaritans out there in the world anymore. So when good acts like that do happen, and we definitely do have to kind of pay attention. And because uh, trust me, I'm, I've been to plenty of uh, plenty of kids soccer games, plenty of, you know, where the parents are almost just as bad as the kids when it comes to competition, you know, yelling at them and things like that and pushing their kids beyond their limits. Like, it, you know, it, it's um, yeah, it can be pretty disturbing when it comes to parents at uh, at at games in general for their kids. Um, so to see a, a, a parent figure supporting their kid um, in doing the right thing, I think definitely does go a long way. So uh, while while I don't think this was the best episode of the season, uh, this was really a really solid episode and a really great lesson. And I'm so glad that we had somebody like Sarah Dalton in here to help teach us that lesson in here and teach somebody like Izzy uh, that lesson as well. Um, let's see here. We also got introduced. Here as well to the uh, Tiger Claw Zord, if I'm not mistaken, Izzy winds up actually getting her Zord. Uh, poor, poor Javi. <laughs> Javi looks like he's going to be the last one to certainly get his. And I think in some of the episode descriptions that we've seen, I think either episode uh, seven, I believe, he might uh, actually eventually come around, uh, come around to getting his Zord. Um, so I am really eager to that. But I, I do love this this Tiger Claw Zord. Um, the it almost reminds me very much of like the Saber Tooth Tiger. If that's, I'm pretty sure that's probably what it is but the claw formation in here uh was just smooth as hell man that that claw boost as well towards the end for that final attack um i thought it looked marvelous and i also really love the idea of seeing izzy determined to go ahead and save her zord right when she finds out what it is that they're trying to do i love the fact that she recognizes that her zord's there and then goes to fight for her zord i don't know if that creates any type of bond between her and her Zord at that particular moment in time. But it is something cool to kind of see a ranger wanting to, to protect and, and fend off evil in order to go ahead and, and save its Zord at the end of the day. So I thought that was pretty cool. The action in here was pretty solid. I really love the, um, the, the fight sequences between, um, a boom tower along with Javi and Izzy. They both had their own little individual skirmishes in here. I thought they both looked great. Um, the one with uh, with Javi definitely was Super Sentai footage. They certainly used more Super Sentai footage uh, for the Rangers in this episode than they did uh, previous. There certainly was a mixture of both in here, uh, but I thought, honestly, it was kind of pretty seamless if you ask me um i you know some people may not have even been able to notice the super sentai footage and if you did for me i was like is this footage is this not footage is that easy is that not easy like to the point to where you, you eventually just don't even care like it just it just flows so seamlessly it's not even an issue when you watch it on screen. So uh, I love the way that they blended the original footage. And I guess because of the fact that the real soldier footage is still pretty new, right? It hasn't really outdated too much um, that it kind of still blends in really well with our, our HD quality stuff that we have here. So uh, I was I was really impre impressed with what we saw, uh, not just with the first battle against uh, Boom Tower, uh, but also even seeing Izzy go one-on-one -on -one with him uh, in this episode too, I thought was uh, really telling uh, her just rushing into battle great morphing little flash morphing sequence in the middle of as she's kind of running towards it i thought the morph sequence uh the flash morph sequence was really brilliant for her uh, and just seeing her go one-on-one -on -one with boom tower uh was was pretty good i always want to say call boom tower tank joe still from real soldier it's something that's right on the tip of my tongue each and every time uh i go and say boom tower's name um, but um, uh, the morphing sequence I thought in here was was brilliant as well. Um, getting the opportunity to see the roll call for everybody, which I was certainly hoping that we would. Getting to see Izzy and Javi have their own little time to shine. Like I just love when they give out their roll call, you know, and say out their names, and they're just slashing around their freaking swords and stuff. Just really, just really clean, man. Just really clean. Uh, the visuals are per perfection. 
when it when it comes to that. And then, of course, accompanied by Burt Selling's uh, composement uh, co composition on top of it. I mean, damn, it gets it gives me chills every time. And one of the things that I loved about this warfing sequence too was just uh, the camera work and some of the decisions that went into it. You know, when they pop up the dino key and he flips it, the idea that you immediately like not all five of the rangers' faces pop up at once. It's really subtle, but it's just like you see the 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 the, the divides kind of pop up. It's like doom 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 as uh, everybody winds up flashing their key. So you get to see all the characters one on one. Like at first it's just on Zato, but then boom 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 boom, everybody winds up kind of coming into it. So I love that choice of having like a, the rolling faces across the screen instead of it just being plastered on there. And then the really great like pull-out shot uh, of Zato as he's got his morpher and they're going to go ahead and start morphing and then the shot pulls out and you see all the other rangers getting ready. I, I just thought some really great um, direction and uh, choice selection for the morphing sequence here this week. So uh, really great stuff that we wind up getting. Uh, I do want to talk briefly just a little bit about... Um, Jane and Jay Borg um, really continue to enjoy these two. I, I really do. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure maybe there are probably some people out there that are maybe getting tired of them. I'm not sure if there are, but if you are getting tired of them, I can kind of understand, but for me, it really works. I I love the the at least the first time that we saw Jane, Jane and Jay Borg on here when they're continuing to push the Ranger hotline and they're talking to little kids, right? Just a little PSA uh, for the kids and things like that. But I just thought it was so creative. Um, the song, uh, the kids were just absolutely, utterly adorable to say the least. Um, and then really just getting that hotline message out, I thought was just super important. But um, the the song that they sung definitely made me laugh for sure. Um, the idea of the little girl when Jane is freaking out, how she picks up and she remembers the song, she puts in the, the phone number and she starts calling up for the Power Rangers to help. I just thought it was this the sweetest and cutest thing, honestly. Uh, and seeing, every, seeing Jane freak out, despite the fact that she's telling everybody else to keep calm, uh, uh, I really had a great laugh uh, whenever these two certainly tend to be on screen. Uh, and that's when the monster winds up coming and then the Rangers wind up showing up to the park. Um, I, I really enjoy uh, seeing these two on screen. You know, the idea of them maybe towards the end of the episode where they get into the trash can and things like that. Maybe that was a little bit too much, but I get why they're in the show. And I definitely do appreciate it for sure because it does bring some great humor. The line of it's wasting so much water. Like <laughs> it did make me chuckle. They do make me chuckle for sure. Because uh, I have loved how how they've been utilized, I, I really have enjoyed it. To be honest with you, so uh, I guess maybe you know maybe some characters just hit you differently, right? Like I just don't think that Jane and um, Jay Borg are too over the top to um, just pull me out of the episode. They still feel like they are grounded in that sense, um, but they still have fun with it. And I, and, and I really do enjoy having them on here. It feels a lot more natural than some of the stuff uh, that we've gotten before, honestly. Um, a couple of great lines this week that I really appreciated. Um, Someone smells like rotten fish. Yeah, I bet his fighting stinks too. Uh, I, I love that line between um, Izzy and Amelia. Um, the, also the line, uh, first off, I love the fact too that when it comes to the siblings in here and they're helping out with Lily, I love the fact that when we start off the episode, it's Javi that's telling Lily, you know, you're our, you're our, our favorite cousin. And she says, I'm your only cousin, silly, right? And then they kind of repeat that at the end of the episode where... Uh, uh, where Lily tells Izzy that, like, um, uh, something along the lines of like, you know, you're my favorite cousin or something like that. And then Javi comes in and he's like, what, like, what about me? Uh, or he's like, what am I then? Uh, he's like, what am I invisible? And then I love the fact that, uh, Izzy pops up. It's like, who said that? Uh, I thought that was just pretty, pretty clever. Honestly, just a little hints of humor here or there that I really do appreciate. And also the, are, are you, are you gassy kind of moments made me chuckle each and every time. Clearly, Clearly, Izzy has an issue with gas or stomach, you know, stomach issues uh, in her past sort of thing for her brother and her father to immediately think that that's the first thing that's <laughs> that's bothering her. Um, so I thought that was rather telling in regards to uh, in regards to Izzy also. Um, and quick honorable mention does go out to Area 62 once again. I've really been enjoying how they're using Void Knight, you know, compared to how Real Soldier certainly was used. They definitely are using this um, uh, this character to perfection also. 
uh, and really giving him some time to shine. Uh, he, it's a really great costume. There's a ton of mystery behind him, so why not? I love the fact that he is leading this group of misfits um, to go ahead and try and take down the Rangers, and the idea of him doing it in Area 62 just continues to add more mystery, right? Him mentioning the idea that the previous scientists that used to occupy this place also detected sort of rare mineral of rare materials or um, you know materials that they weren't sure was from this earth or didn't know an unexplainable type of thing so they clearly were also looking for uh the 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 zords themselves so I am wondering who uh, who this used to belong to I, I am kind of hoping that Simon Bennett and the writing team explore uh where area 62 came from and truly it's importance like there's a reason why void knight certainly selected this place and with all the maps and all the um information that's in that facility it seems as though there is a connection to what void knight is looking for and what they certainly were also in the past so i, I definitely am looking forward to seeing what the connections are because if anybody knows how to include sort of Power Ranger lore uh, into Power Rangers uh, tell in Power Ranger series is definitely Simon Bennett uh, and Chip Lynn from who we wind up seeing uh, in, in Beast Morphers last year, especially that last half of season two, just um, doing a remarkable job, honestly. Um, but um, um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen when it comes to um, Area 62. Do you guys have any particular... Um, uh, theories as to what that could potentially be right i mean i feel like there's so many nods to um past dino seasons in here we also got the the nod to operation overdrive i am kind of wondering if there is um um so, some references that that we wind up picking up that maybe have connections to those previous seasons uh that do get highlighted in dino fury certainly going uh going forward but overall guys another solid episode i i thought izzy along with lily really shined uh sarah and tessa i thought did uh an an absolutely brilliant job to kind of have Izzy be that character to show that competitive side. Um, you know, uh, if you're not first, you're last kind of mentality. But I love to be able to see that um, she does have that that right winning attitude. But also the idea of helping people uh, is maybe a little bit more than winning, right? Winning certainly isn't everything, but you know, maybe the idea of helping other people also makes you a winner to a certain extent, right? It may not necessarily be winning in the sense of, I got to win this race, uh, but maybe you just win in life. You know what I'm saying? By doing a good deed for people at the end of the day. So I great, great message. Great message, honestly. Uh, but listen, guys, at the end of the day, I want to know your thoughts. What did you guys think about episode number five of Dino Fury? Winning attitude, guys. That's definitely one that we all certainly have to have. And I definitely hope that we all certainly learned a lesson uh, from Lily, uh, aka, or I should say Sarah Dalton, aka Lily this week so thank you very much simon bennett for another fantastic episode along with becca and alwyn uh but yeah these are just my a plus opinions guys at the end of the day i want to know yours so let me thought let me know your thoughts in the live chat or the comment section box below and with that guys let's go ahead and get into your comments for this particular week's episode of dino fury and also some quick shout outs jinsaku what's up jinsaku still loving izzy yeah she definitely is a fan favorite for sure man i feel like i, I will say this there was a ton of hype uh, and a ton of buildup going into episode four. Uh, and the fact that they delivered uh, was rather incredible. And all week long, man, I could not go on Twitter without seeing Izzy Love, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Today's been a little bit more quiet, I feel like, on Twitter. Um, but, um, you know, I think, if anything, it's definitely for another solid episode for sure. Uh, DHR2 says everything about this episode was solid. Good to a five for five for you. Very nice. If anything, if I had to, I'll probably give it a B. I'll probably give it a B. I certainly definitely enjoyed it. So maybe like a four out of five for me. Uh, let's see here what some of you guys are saying also. Don't worry. I will get to it. I'll get to as many comments as I can, uh, especially for those that um, uh, wind up popping up in here rather late. So let's see here. Mm -mm. Man, I didn't get my water or my coffee ready this morning. And it's okay. <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. AJ. AJ says, uh, Jane and Jay Borg still felt natural. Uh, they were still uh, part of the story, even allowing the Rangers to appear uh, when they morphed. Uh, great to see the cop again on Power Rangers. Yeah, I kind of like the idea that it's Jane and Borg. I don't know if this is going to be their thing uh, where Jane and Borg are just going to be the, you know, the um, the ones to constantly push the hotline like i'm wondering if that's going to be their their shtick for the remainder of the season if they're going to keep trying to push uh push that out for people so everybody's aware or not but yeah i, I love how they are fitting into uh this episode or the season i should say
Uh, Blossom says, uh, did you notice that there is a bit of Cena from Kara Major in Izzy, you know, female Green Ranger as an athlete and all? Yeah, that, that very much so. Very much so. Um, when I do think of Izzy, I definitely do think more Cena than Toa, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Red is not a flavor. Says, I'm very angry Izzy didn't leave that girl on the side of the road and win the race. <laughs> I don't know if you're joking or not. Red is not a flavor, but hey, you know, sometimes people are brutally honest, man. Sometimes people are brutally honest. <laughs> I got to respect it, man. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this up, Blossom, right? The, the, for, for the I, for the record, am glad that Izzy helped that girl. <laughs> that is being a good sport. Yeah, it definitely is being a good sport. It definitely goes a, a really long way for sure. And listen, you know, karma is a real thing in life, people, or at least I feel like karma certainly is, you know? So if, uh, if you've got that opportunity to go ahead and, um, and do something great for somebody or at least help somebody out, do yourself a favor, man. Definitely go ahead and do so. Maybe it'll come back tenfold at the end of the day. <laughs> red says are you trying to tell me that there are no medics in this race <laughs> he's like somebody will come and get her somebody will come and get her <laughs> uh you what's up you good to see you in here man it says awesome episode and i love the representation it provided yeah absolutely simon bennett clearly understands the importance of what power rangers means uh to society um, and the idea of being able to allow everybody to truly be sort of represented, um, it really, really goes a long way, man. So I love the fact that they are continuing um, to make sure that that is a message that they send out each and every week. <clears throat> uh, Marcelino says, is the actress actually disabled or not? And is it right for a non-disabled actor to play uh, disabled characters? Well, um, I will say this. Um, I, the, the actress, yes, is disabled, intellectually disabled, for sure, as she even mentions it in the episode. There's a reason why she's a part of the Special Olympics World Games and great at what she certainly does. Uh, as far as is it right for non-disabled actors to play disabled actors? Uh, I mean, that's why they're actors, right? I mean, granted, listen, you know, if if you can get somebody that's disabled to play a disabled actor, but you know, by all means, definitely go ahead and do that. I would personally feel like that would be maybe my first choice. But I think also for me, I'm also under the impression that actors are actors, right? Actors are supposed to portray people that they aren't in real life per se. Um, so there are times when I'm perfectly okay with that, but I, you know, I would definitely go with a disabled actor if you can to fill that role. But if not, I still think a regular actor would be fine, but I just feel like, I don't know. I don't know when it comes to representing like special Olympics and things like that. Um, maybe you want to go the route of making sure that you definitely have somebody that's uh, a disabled actor, but uh, you know, I'm sure everybody has their own opinion in regards to that. But I've always looked at actors as people that are supposed to perform right and be people that they're not supposed to be. Um, uh, and and uh, that's, that's part of their job. So I, that's how I, that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, 88, this is what I re was referring to. Uh, yeah, there's always regional, state, and worldwide competitions in Special Olympics from being part of this organization. Uh, from being a part of this organization, this is something special. Yeah, so uh, that's what I was referring to when I was talking about my, my friend Marilyn and her brother uh, who was, in fact, uh, disabled and part of uh, the Special Olympics as well. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I do think it was probably more uh, regional kind of state stuff um, than maybe worldwide competition. I could be wrong, but I, I do remember we used to work together uh, me and Marilyn for years. And so I used to always see um, them uh, training for competitions and stuff. Really, really inspirational stuff. Her brother was an awesome guy too. Ram Jam. What's up, Ram Jam? Appreciate you coming through. Um, and then uh, Adrian says the hologram table uh, was a nod to Dino Charge when they used their hologram table as a map. Yeah, they definitely did use that in their base from Dino Charge. Um, really, really enjoyed seeing it here. And I, always, I just feel like the special effects definitely are heightened for sure in this season. Uh, Blossom says when Jane and Jay Borg were showing the kids what to do uh, when there was a Sporex beast, uh, that little girl was the only one who followed the stay calm plan. Cool, right? Yeah, and actually remembered the phone number immediately. Uh, I, I really love that scene. I thought that scene was just cute and adorable, man. And I, I, I love the creativity of going behind, like going ahead and trying coming up with like a little bit of a catchy tune for the Power Ranger hotline that would that would really, um, 
I, for me, I almost got stuck in my head, honestly, but I do think it's really easy for kids to certainly pick up on. I am kind of curious how many people have actually tried to dial that number since uh, it was since the number was revealed. Um, the only thing about um, the only thing in this episode that I did catch um, that I didn't know notice was an error, and I don't know if they meant to do this or not. Um, when they're transform, when they're when they're about to get into their Zords formations, and uh, the four of the five get into the main Zord because Izzy is still uh, running her race, if I'm not mistaken, or she's she's fighting on her own. When they, when the four of them do get into their Zord and they're getting ready to link up, when they link up, if you notice, uh, the the shot that comes up real quick is all five of them. The Green Ranger is actually uh, in the cockpit also. So I'm wondering if that was reused footage from uh, from the previous episode that they just kind of edited in there real quick, maybe hoping nobody <laughs> would would kind of catch it. That's really the only like hiccup continuity wise that I wind up um, catching here in, in in this week's episode. Uh, video DVD, um, uh, the transition between original and Sentai footage in the fight was easily noticeable from cl cloudy to sunny. I know it's the weather, but it's previous episodes. The transitions uh, were more subtle. It, it didn't really hit me that way uh, in this uh, in this episode video, but you you might be right. Um, I'm sure it probably hits people a little bit differently. I mean, you might be able to tell, like for me at least, um, when they transition, I think when I, I'm trying to remember where the transition was that made me start questioning where the original footage ended and the Super Sentai footage began. I think it was... Um, the monster was shooting his water at him and you see Zato kind of diving and rolling behind one of the playground toys. When he, when we see him running, I thought to myself, yeah, they definitely changed locations there for sure. So some of the stuff definitely, um, it, you, you could definitely tell, but I honestly felt like it was still rather seamless for the most part. Um, but I definitely get what you're saying, video for sure. Uh, he's a uh, legacy said I couldn't tell any Sentai footage was used for Izzy. If so, it was very brief. Yeah, I don't think there's really too many moments. Uh, I think maybe the longest time that they spend on the real soldier footage for Izzy is when we see, um, uh, the Green Ranger and the Red Ranger. Uh, facing off against the monster one on one, I think that might have been really the only thing that we wind up having. That really, you can really tell. Everything else, for the most part, felt pretty brief. Goku, what's up, Goku? Appreciate you coming through. It says Izzy, Izzy kind of reminded me of Karame Green. Yeah, Cena, another another Cena reference here, and the idea of her being a, a track and field star. He also says Warren Buzzkill is only showing love to Izzy. Poor Javi. Yeah, I I I would like to know what their relationship is like uh, between father and son. Honestly, um, considering the fact that he's not really one of um, uh, very supportive, I guess, when it comes to his music career. Right. Um, it is fascinating to see exactly. Um, uh, why isn't he supportive of his son that's into music, right? But he's he's okay with supporting his daughter when it comes to sports. I, I would like to see what that conversation is like or what that's what that's like. Maybe this upcoming Stegosaurus Steg Stego search, maybe that'll maybe um uh, shine some light on on hobby for us a little bit more. <laughs> you side with the Dr. Akana love. He says, okay, getting Izzy and dad's, uh, Javi's dad um, is cool and all, uh, but we need more of uh, uh, Lani Akana, uh, Ali's mom, just saying, because uh, I don't care what she's doing, uh, just have her there. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Akana definitely was getting some love over the past couple, first couple of episodes for sure. You know, maybe she's just doing some digging of her own, some more research, you know what I mean? Uh, JB says, what says it was a good episode, but the first four, uh, were really great. Yeah. I mean, I, I have at least uh, out of the five, I've got three that are great, two that are good so far, um, that I, I, I've, I've certainly have enjoyed.
<laughs> I'm Hanson, dude. Says, uh, first time we see a cast wear two sets of clothes in the episode. Made sense. We did get a first uh, time change uh, for the race. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we absolutely, we absolutely did get a different time change. You're absolutely right. Midwest. What's up, Midwest? Appreciate you coming through today. Alden, as always, certainly come through. Says, I can't wait for the next episode. Yeah, it should be good. We're going to go through some um, episode descriptions also. So we'll definitely highlight uh, that as well. Yeah, I got to agree with you, Adrian. Um, the group morph I thought was 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 great to watch. Uh, again, I thought it was just great direction, um, great uh, shot selection. Also, just that pulled back view from Zato to see all the rest of the Rangers getting ready to morph with them as well. That beat drop by Bert Selling as always just kind of hits me in the feels each and every time. Uh, and to, to see everybody just get their own um, personal roll call, I thought was was brilliant for this episode. <clears throat> Alexis, do you think Cure Ranger will be adapted after Dino Fury? Because I've been praying to God that Cure Ranger gets adapted in 2023. Uh, would I like it? Yes. Do I think it will? No, but that's just me. That's just me. Um, that's just me. Um, I would love for it to. Absolutely. Enrique, we got another Perez in the house. We just, you know. Adrian, let's go get Chance and Enrique and just have a Perez family reunion. I think we just I think we just need to have a family picnic or something or an outing together. Maybe toss around the football a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Have a couple drinks, hang out. Uh, come on. Come on. Uh, the Tiger Zord combination of the Dino Fury Megazord is amazing, isn't it, though? That claw formation is pretty badass. I'm a sucker for great swords and zords that are uh, swords and zords that are fast and so I, lo I love just that boost that we wind up getting <laughs> jutsaku that hotline song goes hard though yeah it does i'm telling you it got caught in my head a couple of times i can't even lie <laughs> i love it i love it i might i might be listening to that on uh i might be listening to that today what's up mom my mom coming through karma is so real she's a Trust me on that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Karma is a real thing, man. So trust me, uh, put down what you're doing. If you got to help somebody out, help somebody out. It goes a long way at the end of the day. Pay it forward. Adamba, what's up, Adamba? Thank you very much for coming through. It says the inclusion of a disabled person made it feel good. Absolutely. It made it for a very feel good episode for sure, man. Um, uh, again, you know, uh, props to Simon Bennett for understanding the importance of inclusion. You know, I, I say this all the time and, you know, you know, there clearly there are, are, are cultures and ethnicities and, and people in society that I, I don't necessarily connect with or relate to, you know what I mean? That I don't fully understand um, some of the turmoil and the tribulations that they have to kind of go through in their life. But the one thing that I understand, especially as a uh, somebody of mixed culture, you know, half black, half Puerto Rican, I understand the importance in how incredible it is to feel represented to see yourself on the big screen or even on the small screen. You know, um, I think sometimes, just because we don't necessarily connect with somebody else that's different from us, we may not necessarily understand the impact of what them seeing themselves on the screen may be like, right? Um, like I'm, I'm not a little girl, so I don't necessarily know what it means for little girls to see themselves. But what I, what I can tell you is that just from watching, say like interviews and, and, um, red carpets, right? Like when I go back, I, I bring this up all the time, like Brie Larson, right. As captain Marvel, you know, there are some people that may certainly hate on Brie Larson, but what she's doing as captain Marvel and bringing a, a female to the big screen to show just that anybody can be a superhero in your life and really want to achieve greatness, being able to see the enthusiasm of those little girls, whether they be black, white, brown, you know, whatever the case may be, to see the enthusiasm that they have to somebody like a Captain Marvel or a Brie Larson and what they certainly are representing goes a long way. And so I love the fact that 
these showrunners are so mindful of that um, that they are giving everybody the opportunity to truly be able to shine uh, and, and showcase themselves and to be able to think you can be a Power Ranger someday. And even if not a Power Ranger, that you can accomplish this. You can you can go on and compete in track and field stuff, right? You can be a gold medalist yourself uh, at anything that you certainly want to be. And I, I just, I, I love that. I, I absolutely love that. So even though sometimes we may not understand how it affects people, trust me, when I say it definitely does go a long way. And it's one of the reasons why I'm a huge Power Ranger fan. And I have been for years because of the fact that I love that everybody is included when it comes to being a Power Ranger. And so uh, I, I definitely agree with you, man. The inclusion was uh, brilliant here. This, this episode, just um, hitch in the feels, hitch in the feels. <clears throat> And I, I will also say this. I also will say this. Uh, Lily is probably a much better person than I am uh, because <laughs> I did see somebody on Twitter earlier on today mention the idea, like just the fact that Lily gives Izzy at the end her Special Olympics gold medal. I don't know if I could have done that. <laughs> I'd be like, look, here, here's this ribbon. You can have this ribbon. This, you know, thank you for participating, ribbon. I, I don't mind giving that to you, but uh, I don't know if I'm giving up my gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely she's definitely a much better person than I am in that sense. I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you cross the finish line, give you a thanks for participating ribbon, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to hold on to this medal. I'm going to hold on to this medal. <laughs> I'll give you a hug, I'll pat you on the back, I'll congratulate you. Great job, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. <laughs> JB says what says I did laugh when the cop wanted to give them a ticket while in the dumpster. He was kind of enthusiastic about it too. He's like, "Now th now that's a ticket or something like that." I yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, Legacy, I'm glad you brought this up. He said, I think it's really cool that Izzy and Javi were able to be in the Megazord, even though both of them don't have their Zords yet until now with Izzy. Makes them feel included. That, that's a good point. I didn't even really think about that, uh, Legacy. The fact that they don't have their Zords, yet they're still included in the cockpit uh, scenes, right? Uh, they're still helping win the day and, and control the Zord, even if their Zords isn't necessarily included. So uh, I, you make a great point. You make a great point, right? They you know, Zato could have been a complete asshole and be like, no, guys you don't have your zords yet you wait out here we'll go ahead and take care of this but no he's like look you guys are clearly enthusiastic about zords he's like, what, what is it with you guys and zords i don't understand but <laughs> but i love the fact that he brings them in frankie uh disabled actor good uh, uh good come uh, power rangers i'm talking i'm assuming you're talking about sarah dalton I don't know her in real life per se, as she is just a um uh, uh an, an athlete. But you know, hey Sarah, after after this episode, you should dabble in some acting for sure. You really should dabble into more acting. Uh, I thought, yeah, I don't think they ask too much of her for sure in this. But to be able to have one on one scenes with somebody that is talented like a Tessa Rao and being able to give, get your thoughts across and express yourself right, and to allow us as a viewer viewer to understand how you're certainly feeling, I thought she did a I thought she did a really good job. Uh, Ranger Toa says, rank the five Rangers so far. Okay. For me, I'm going to go Izzy. I'm going to go Zato. I'm going to go Amelia, Kai, Javi. So that's, that, that's, that's my ranking as of right now. If I had to put down ranking, that would be my ranking right now. Izzy, Zato, Amelia, Kai, and Javi. And I and I'll be honest, Kai and Amelia for me, are I can I feel like I can kind of swap those out. I feel like I can kind of swap them out, depending on how I'm feeling that day. <laughs> mom, mom, what you're half black and half Puerto Rican? I mean, I, I hope you would know, mom. I hope you would know, unless there was a milkman I didn't know about. Uh, she says, "True representation is so important, uh, and needed to help, uh, and needed to help them see that they matter. Absolutely, I think that's super important that you do matter at the end of the day. That just because you have this disability or does you know you're maybe a different sex or a different uh, you know ethnicity or color, you still matter at the end of the day. We all have a huge impact in this world. So I, I definitely agree with you."
Uh, AJ says, uh, Chance Perez has a new song coming out next week. First time as a solo artist. Very nice. I'll definitely have to go ahead and check it out, man. You know, I'm definitely going to listen uh, to to uh, to what Chance uh, what Chance is going to go ahead and put down. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely listen to that. Uh, Adamba, yes, going back to uh, Jason Smith. Yes, for those of you who didn't know, Jason Smith, who played uh, Casey on um, Jungle Fury, uh, was the voice for the monster this week. <laughs> Red is not a flavor, it's so savage, though. He said, yeah, Lily should have kept that medal. Only winners get medals. <laughs> is he lost? Yeah, participation trophy might have been cool. No, I'm just, listen, I have no problem with her giving her her medal. If that's if she, if she feels like in her eyes, that's even more winning than winning a race, right? The idea of going out there and helping somebody. If she feels that that's medal worthy, no problem with Lily. I have no problem with Lily giving her her medal. I just don't know if I could have given her my medal. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, Izzy, great job. Unbelievable. So such a great sportsman. That's that's great sportsmanship right there. Let, let's go out for dinner. Let's go get some drinks or something like that. Let's celebrate, right? Uh, I'm not giving you my medal, though. I'm not giving you my medal, though. But I am glad Lily did. I'm glad Lily did. Look, Alexis says, Adam, if you say Cure Ranger didn't get adapted in 2023, so that is how it's going to be. Wow. I'm no longer coming to your shows. Take care, Alexis. Take care. Um, you know, it was great having you while you were here. I appreciate it. But listen, that's just my opinion, right? I just literally said I would love it if they certainly did. Do I think that they're going to? I don't think that they are, but I personally would love to. Listen, you don't have to be at my channel if you certainly don't want to, Alexis. So take care. It's great to have you here. I appreciate your support for what you have given to the channel and coming to our live chats and stuff like that. But if if my opinion is going to hurt people that badly, then I, I just, you know, you don't have to be here. So <laughs> that's just that's what just what it comes down to. Like, I don't I don't. I don't put my opinions out there for everybody to agree with them, right? You can agree, you can disagree. That's more than, that's that's not a problem. But the idea of what I always try and push is respect people's opinions, okay? Respect people's decisions and things like that. If if, if I feel a certain type of way, that's just how I feel. If you feel a certain type of way, that's that's perfectly fine. Again, I felt like I was on your side, Alexis. I would like to see them have a a, a Q Ranger, but I I just don't think that they will. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. I kind of hope that I'm wrong to a certain extent, you know, but, um, you know, it, if, if, if people don't want to watch me because they don't agree with my opinion, that's fine. Um, I'll respect that and just respect that. I take care, <laughs> you know, thank you. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Um, JB says what for his, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, JB says my rank is Zato, Amelia, uh, Izzy, then Ali and Javi. Yeah. You know, I didn't know how, um, Zeta was going to hit me. Um, but I've really loved what Russell Curry has been doing with this character. Honestly. Oh, Kai. Yes. I kept saying Kai. I don't know. <laughs> I get Kai and Ali all uh, mixed up all the time. Uh, wait, is it Sarah or Lily or the actress? The, the, the actress's name is Sarah, but she plays Lily on the show. Um, all right, guys. Um, oh, Brian. What's up, Brian? Want to go ahead and get your question in here. Uh, Byron, excuse me, Byron. I apologize. Um, do you um, think Void Knight is someone who Zato knows? Ooh. I don't think so. I don't think um, Void Knight is somebody that Zato knows. I'm very much. Um, he's familiar with the armor because he does say, where did you get that armor from? You know what I'm saying? Um, but I don't he I don't think he knows who's under it. I I, I don't think it's somebody that knows who he is. Um I, I am under the impression that Zayo probably knows who the Gold Ranger is probably gonna be. It wouldn't surprise me if at the end of the day, if they if he's from the past also, I'm not quite sure. But um I don't think it's somebody that Zato knows when it comes to the void knot. I think it may, maybe it's somebody that we as a viewer know. Um that from maybe a past season of Power Rangers or whatever the case may be, or a brand new villain that winds up popping up. 
But if I had to put my money on it, I would say no. I don't believe Zato knows who the Void Knight is, but he is aware as to what the armor is or where the armor originally comes from. <clears throat> <laughs> Usai, Usai says, I'm sorry, Adam, but this ain't about opinions anymore. I'm calling for the uh, Dr. Akana spinoff of her just digging stuff up <laughs> before we get that Q Ranger adaption. Uh, but seriously, let's just uh, get new concepts. Um, that would be, you know, the, maybe like a Dr. Arcana, um Indiana Jones adventure, her and Ali uh, together, or maybe just her by herself. I that, that would be pretty fun. Like, even if it's just like a little mini web series, just like three episodes of something, you know, um, trying to her trying to find some artifacts or whatever the case may be. But uh, anyway, but other than that, guys, listen, thank you very much for everybody's comments and feel free to certainly continue to comment about um, Dino Fury here. I'm sure we'll probably talk a little bit more about it also once we get to your guys' live viewer questions as well. But um, we're going to go ahead and transition over to our next topic for you guys today. Uh, I don't even know how many episodes we have before the Dino Fury um, hiatus. Uh, I believe that we actually have eight episodes that we're certainly at least going to be getting here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe going all the way out to April... Let me see here. I believe it's April 17th as of right now. Um, so let's go ahead and actually dive into some of these brand new episode descriptions that we have to certainly look forward to as episode number eight uh, has in fact dropped episode eight called Unexpected Guest um, set to go ahead and um, uh, debut Saturday, April 17th. This alone actually just sounds like something that they would leave us on a cliffhanger for. Uh, it says a familiar face arrives on Earth uh, and Zato dismisses his quest as a distraction. After he saves the Rangers from a powerful Sporex beast, Zato realizes an important lesson. Um, this does make me kind of wonder if this is either Mick or the Gold Ranger. Um, a part of me thinks that this might be the Gold Ranger itself. But I would be a little bit surprised, honestly. And the only reason why, I don't want to say I'm, I would be surprised. Well, this is episode eight. Maybe Mick actually premieres himself before we get to this particular episode here. Um, let me see what the the episode description itself. So next week's episode is Superstition Strikes. Amelia thinks she's cursed with bad luck and is reluctant to help Rangers, afraid she'll cause more harm. But when monsters attack the base, she'll learn the truth about luck. I'm really looking forward to next week's episode, especially with Amelia being highlighted and her superstitious aspect. Stego Search, Episode 7. This is the Javi one. The Warden takes away Javi's kitar, putting him in a bad mood, which he refuses to explain to the team. Javi is forced to open up about his new problems in order to find his Zord. So Javi clearly won't find his Zord until Episode number 7 here. So a Warden, Garcia, and Javi sort of moment. I'm really hoping that we get some great father and son development in that episode. Honestly, I really want to know what that connection is like, considering the fact that we have seen a great relationship so far between um, um, Warden Buzzkill and Izzy. Uh, and then, of course, here, episode number 10, Unexpected Guest um, on April 17th. Again, a familiar face arrives on Earth and Zato dismisses his quest as a distraction. It says dismisses his quest. When he says dismisses his quest, the only person I can think of that would have a quest would be another fellow Dino Knight, right? So I am going to, if I had to put myself out there, I would probably say episode number eight would probably see the debut of the Gold Ranger. I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong. After he saves the Rangers from a powerful Sporex beast, Zato realizes an important lesson. So I'm thinking that this is, in fact, the Gold Ranger here. But it wouldn't surprise me if it's if it's Mick also. But I am leaning towards the Gold Ranger. And, you know, it does. The only thing that makes surprises me to a certain extent is when we wind up getting those photos of Mick in the command center uh, for Dino Fury, you know, sometimes I'm under the impression that the photos that we do see um, tend to be really from the first half uh, of the season, right? The first few episodes that we're going to kind of be getting, and we've yet to see him in here. And I'm trying to figure out just based off of the episode descriptions that we have seen where Mick might be able to fit at in these three episodes. So who, I'm curious, could we get Mick and um, and the Gold Ranger all in one episode as a debut? Um, 
I, I would really want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think we'll get Mick here in this, in this portion of the season? Or do you think it'll be something that we wind up getting towards uh, the hiatus or after the hiatus uh, where Mick winds up coming in? I, I would be curious to know what you guys think. But um, this really interests me. Um, the fact that it's going to be a, a Zato-centric uh, episode. Um, clearly, he thinks that this person's quest is a little bit of a distraction. Um, I am. I, it's probably one of the reasons why... I'm under the impression that these two might know each other, Zato and whoever the Gold Ranger is. So I'm hoping we get ourselves more flashback sequences. I'm hoping we get to see more uh, of uh, Zato's time uh, back on Rafcon uh, and with his people, or maybe on Earth when they were battling, um, you know, battling. Um, um, uh, all the monsters and stuff, all the uh, all the sporks beasts. So we'll see. But I, I'm loving the sound of some of the upcoming episodes. I, I'm really keying into all of them. Really, um, now that now that I re look over some of the um, uh, the episode descriptions. And again, these actually come from uh, RangerBoard.com. Uh, I believe it's over um, Kyle over at the uh, the forum uh, has wound up posting this stuff from the uh, cable TV forums and things like that. So uh, I'm kind of curious to know what you guys think. Out of all the uh, upcoming episode descriptions that we have so far for episode six, seven, and eight. Is there an episode that's really standing out to you that you're really fascinated to, to learn a little bit more about? So episode six, I'm hoping for Amelia and Ollie stuff. Episode seven, I definitely want to see Warden uh, Garcia and Javi's relationship. I would love to see more father and, and, and father and son stuff. Uh, and then we're episode eight. I'm kind of hoping that this is more of a Zato and a Gold Ranger episode. But we'll see. We'll see. And we'll definitely keep you posted back here, as always, every Saturday live at noon central time to go ahead and break down Dino Fury stuff for you guys. Um, speaking of Dino Fury, um, we have one more story that we were going to go ahead and dive into for you guys today. And this is for our very special guest who's never really on our show, but he is uh, visually on our show. Simon Bennett, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. High five? No, not today? All right, that's cool. Um, Simon, listen, I, I, you know, while this week I don't have any IG photos for you guys, which if you, again, if you guys have not been checking out um, Simon Bennett's IG page, do yourself a favor and go ahead and do so. Uh, he continues on a daily basis, it feels like, putting up behind the scenes photos. Um, I've been seeing a ton of his photos from um, the finale of Beast Morphers, which uh, just kind of gives me all types of feels because I was such a big fan of the Beast Morpher series. So to kind of see all the set design and everything kind of coming together, really cool stuff, really cool stuff. Um, so if you haven't checked out Simon Bennett's Instagram page, please do yourselves a favor and definitely go ahead and check it out. But the reason why I wanted to bring up Simon Bennett this week is he wind up putting out a tweet this uh, this uh, this past week that I found actually rather interesting that I wanted to go ahead and talk with you guys about because somebody or asked him a question about the potential of him working on a future ep or a future season. Um, so let me go ahead and, and pull this up for you guys so we can actually look at this together real quick. Um, this is uh, from Simon Bennett himself. This comes from a demonic devourer. What a, what a, what a name. Um, he says, uh, Pukina one who's Simon Bennett. I know this is too early, but I know that they just started with Zen Kaiser, but with all the content that the power Ranger franchise has, is it possible that there could be an adaption of Zen Kaiser based on the power Ranger content? Or is that a little too soon to make a decision on that? So clearly somebody wanting to know if Zen Kaiser, was in their plans. This is uh, what Simon Bennett winds up saying. He says, still 100% focused on making Daniel Fury as good as it can possibly be. Not really looking any further than this. I watched episode one of Zinkaiger and enjoyed it. Now, for those of you who are not aware, um, when it comes to this particular series and Dino Fury, Simon Bennett has mentioned that him and his writing team uh, literally sat down and watched Real Soldier as it was airing live, uh, kind of following along with us, if you will, uh, when the new episodes wind up dropping. I'm pretty sure they probably watched it with English subtitles. I don't know if they I mean, I would think that they watched it with English subtitles. Maybe I'm wrong, uh, but it definitely seems as though they were uh, planning for this um, very early on, to certainly say the least. So the fact that Simon Bennett has at least checked out episode one of Zen Kaiser is pretty encouraging. Um, but the fact that they haven't really looked any further than this at this point in time um, does make me wonder a little bit. And it doesn't surprise me because, listen, you know, they're still clearly filming Dino Fury season two. They're still putting the pieces together, right? Um, I'm sure season one 
one while it's filmed. I'm sure maybe some aspects are probably still going into post-production. Maybe some visual effects are being added, whatever the case may be. I'm sure they're always tightening up the season as they certainly go along. Um, and it seems Simon Bennett definitely is focused on doing that. And I, I, I just find it interesting just based off of the fact that the future of Power Rangers is such in a flux right now. Um, you know, many people don't really know exactly uh, what's going to happen with um, um, the the uh, Super Sentai adaption side of things. Being able to 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 see what the next season is going to be is pretty difficult right now. So you know, I don't know if he's watching Zenkaiser just for himself, um, because you know he wanted to see what the new series was going to look like, or if this is him watching Zenkaiser because it's eventually going to become a future season for Power Rangers. Who certainly knows? Um, but I love the fact that Simon Bennett's at least open-minded enough and keeping track of all the stuff that he's doing you know clearly keeping track of what's going on in super sentai to a certain capacity uh but also really 100 percent focused on dino fury which he certainly should be right put your best foot forward for what you definitely do have in store for us as of right now um uh, because uh, they've been they've been winning <laughs> as of right now power rangers dino fury has been doing nothing but winning for the past five weeks uh so i'm really thrilled that his uh his focus certainly still remains uh on dino fury but it, it will be interesting i just thought that was a really fascinating tweet uh to go ahead and, and talk about a little bit because it does it did make me think like well he has watched episode one of zenkaiger does that mean that he they've been watching it on a weekly basis and maybe just getting storyline ideas sort of in play here but um you know the fact that his mindset like he says not really looking any for any further than this it makes me wonder if hasbro has kind of even made those type of decisions yet you know or kind of pulled the trigger you know a part of me is kind of feeling that maybe after Dino Fury because of the fact that we have somebody like a Jonathan Entwistle who is um, working on rebooting and reimagining Power Rangers, like I I'm I'm wondering if we're immediately going to go back into another series um, after this, or if Power Rangers is going to take like a few months or or a year off or something like that from uh, doing any type of shows while it kind of preps, or once Dino Fury ends, are we immediately just going to go into another series? Right, there's still a lot of questions to definitely be answered, um, but um, I just thought that was. Uh, pretty telling from Simon Bennett and I guess read into it certainly what what you wish um, but uh, I, I am glad that Simon Bennett continues to at least reach out um, to the fans and um, uh, and trying to answer questions a, as much as he possibly can you know what i mean so uh that definitely does go a long way in the in the fans eyes for sure uh but guys i definitely want to know your thoughts at the end of the day you know simon bennett mentions he's watched zenkaiger episode one but he's fully focused 100 percent on dino fury do you think this means anything do you think that right now that's really just the focus is dino fury and they haven't really come up with concepts yet for the following season i kind of want to know what you guys think in the live chat or the comment section box below ladies and gentlemen and with that we will go ahead and move on to our next topic and really start getting into the nitty gritty of some uh, tokusatsu stuff for you guys also. Uh, let me see what you guys are saying, though. Um, Thomas, what's up, Thomas? Appreciate you coming through today. Thank you very much for uh, joining us over on Facebook. Thank you. <laughs> Midwest says, did Simon just admit to pirating Zenkaiger? No, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually got the... Um, the. You know what? I'm not... I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything. I feel like he probably's got he's probably got the hookup though. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure he's probably got the hookup. Maybe he watches it simulcast or some someplace somewhere that we don't even know about. You know what I mean? <laughs> Charles, what's up, Charles? Appreciate you coming through. He says I like Izzy. Yes, a, a plenty, a lot of us certainly do. She's definitely grown on a lot of people, honestly. Uh, going into some of your guys' comments, uh, Sunny Shield says uh, it could be gold, but I hope it's Mick. Uh, yeah, I want to see how Mick would be introduced uh, into this uh, into this season. Oh, Ga Go Go Goku, I'm glad you brought this up. He says, I think Void Knight plan is to use a Sporex to power up his mecha. Um, ooh, from the movie. Interesting. Do you think um, Void Knight will be redeemed and join the team? Maybe get the Real Soul Brown form. Um, I think the Real Soul Brown form might be reserved for Mick. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if Mick winds up uh, maybe putting on the armor maybe one time or so. Um, so, no, I don't believe Void Knight will be redeemed. I think, if anything, uh, maybe they'll keep him as the villain. 
whether or not he's going to be the main overarching villain unless somebody pops up towards the very end who knows um i but i'm not expecting a, a void knight redemption story even though i'm a i'm a sucker for redemption stories but i don't really see that happening as of right now but um we'll see we'll see goku um but i also love the fact that we do see void knight actually getting another sporex under his belt right we have seen a couple of episodes him uh capturing some the rangers capturing some so it's definitely not going to be every episode that they um uh that they uh it's not gonna be every episode that they went out when it comes to the sporex uh i'm han handsome dude says i think the unexpected guest is mick the title says unexpected guests a gold ranger isn't a guest star it's a recurring main character um uh, says familiar face that means someone the audience knows um or unless it's a familiar face that it's referring to something that zato Right, that it might be a familiar face to Zato uh, as well. I mean, you make up some good points. Um, the Gold Ranger isn't a guest star, unexpected guest. Well, when I say when I think of the title "unexpected guest," I don't necessarily think of it as um, they mean like, "Hey, unexpected guest star." You know, I think it's a unexpected guest. Like if somebody comes knocking at your door that you didn't expect, right? That's an unexpected guest. You could you could know them and be super familiar with them. Um, but the fact that they come in unexpectedly, I think is more about what they're referring to. But you could be right. I'm handsome. Um, some of the key words in there could certainly go mixed way for sure. We'll, we'll definitely have to see. Sarav, what's up, Sarav? Appreciate you coming through. I saw you uh, pop up in here as well. So thank you very much. Uh, Blossom says, I do love to see Javi play his guitar. Uh, that's my absolute favorite instrument. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually do see him play his, uh, his guitar. Um, I'm kind of almost wondering if we'll actually think, um, I I'm actually curious if, um, we'll see a performance by him at, at some particular point in time this season. Um, AJ also says, I think it's both Mick and the gold Ranger. We're already on episode five. Usually the six Ranger arrives in episode seven or eight, like Nate did in beast morphers. Uh, we are going on a hiatus soon. So yeah, sometimes there, I will say that sometimes I do wish that they held off the appearance of the sixth Ranger until maybe when we come back from a hiatus, you know, maybe leave us on a little bit of a, I mean, they do tend to sometimes leave us, leave us on a cliffhanger. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what they wind up doing here for episode eight. Uh, Russian Sentai. He says, I think Dino Fury will be the last season for Power Rangers. I think uh, maybe in the, I wouldn't say, I guess m maybe if anything, maybe the last season of Power Rangers as we're familiar with it uh, is how is how I would kind of put it, right? I, I wouldn't want to put a kombosh on the idea of it being the end of Power Rangers because it's clearly not the end of Power Rangers, but maybe just as Power Rangers as we know it. But uh, we'll see if as further details wind up coming in. You know, you say also you say that Zenkaiju can't be adapted into Power Rangers. Uh, I think it could. I think it could. Um, I just think uh, there would be some redesigning that would certainly have to take place. Uh, I just think it just depends on how much money Hasbro honestly wants to spend in um in, in doing a, a type of uh, adaption. Do I think it would be good? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, but uh, I would never say anything is not possible. It just depends on how much money you actually want to go ahead and spend. Uh, but again, you would have to definitely redesign some stuff for sure. <clears throat> Common Rider. What's up, Common Rider? Appreciate you coming through today. Uh, Captain RGD says, will they shorten the morphing sequence? I mean, they, they definitely have already. Um, when I think of the morphing sequence, I think the morphing sequence completes the moment... Um, uh, I only find it as a long morphing. I mean, well, so they have shortened the morphing sequence. We have seen just flash morphs. We have seen morphs of them doing the morph sequence, you know, them changing the things coming across them. And then boom, that's it. We have also seen full roll calls where after the suit encompasses them, they then get the opportunity to pose and do their movements and call out their name sort of thing, right? So we do have three different types of morphing sequences here. So I, I think we have enough variety in regards to short ones, regular size ones, and, and longer morph sequences.
uh, Byron talking a little bit about the original villains here, Sledge, Heckle, Snide, Blazing Roxy, and Evox and Scrozzle, now Void Knight. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, they, they do some great work. And while not a villain, Solon is definitely a, a, an original character also with incredible costume and uh, costume design for sure. Uh, Common Rider says, um, you think it would be cool for a season of Power Rangers if the Sixth Ranger debuted in either episode 16 or 17? Um, I don't know if I would have it that late, um, but I would probably have my debut episode for the Sixth Ranger, usually at, probably after um, the hiatus, maybe that very first episode that we get back to uh, help draw people in once again. Um, like, I don't want to blow my load you know, before the hiatus and then levels of enthusiasm kind of drops over the three months and then we come back to another episode. Um, we have seen that happen over the years. But, um, you know, Dino Fury's got people's attentions for sure. Uh, it's It's been fantastic uh, over the, you know, five five weeks kind of going in. Can it keep that momentum until, this, uh, until the mid-season finale? Uh, I do think it can. I do think that it certainly can. And if anything, uh, we'll hopefully carry people into uh, the summertime hiatus for sure. Uh, Goku uh, says this, uh, this no Sentai adaption is just a rumor and it's all been speculation from the fandom. Uh, I mean, listen, it is speculation. It definitely is speculation as of right now. I mean, nobody's sitting here confirming anything. Um, this is one of the reasons why we say it could, it could not be right. Like it's, it's certainly up in the air. The moves though, that Hasbro has been doing over the past two years or so feels as though they're putting themselves into a position where Power Rangers is simply just going to become their own sort of thing. Um, you know, could we be wrong? Absolutely. Um, nobody's saying that that's fact. Uh, we, 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 we talk about it very much in a speculatory sort of way. Um, but I do think that it's a, a big possibility enough to be out there and warranted to even be talked about on a regular basis. So uh, I do think it's something that uh, Power Ranger fans should be talking about in a respectful manner, though. All right, guys, uh, with that, <laughs> with that, uh, I'm definitely going to go ahead and transition. Um, oh, a couple things here real quick, though. Um, Goku, uh, Bamba's more buff in this suit compared to Javi. This is one of the reasons why when they were talking about um, the potential uh, actors that were going to be playing uh, some of these characters is one of the reasons why I thought um, Russell Curry would probably be the Black Ranger just from his stature alone because he's definitely much bigger than um, than than Chance Perez is um, so I, I thought he would probably fit that role pretty well. Um, all right, guys, let's go ahead and move on to our next topic. We're going to start getting into some tokusatsu news uh, for you guys today. So let's go ahead and start diving in. Um, one of the series, um, uh, one one of the movies that I've been really looking forward to when it comes to tokusatsu, uh, I've been really wanting to try and get into Ultraman. And it's been a minute since um, I've actually watched anything Ultraman related. I think the last time I watched anything was um, the Ultraman uh, series that they had on Netflix a couple of years back. Great series to say the least, but I've been really wanting to get into some of the live action stuff and I have not had the opportunity to do so. But a couple of months back, guys, we actually got ourselves a brand new trailer for an upcoming Ultraman live action movie titled Shin Ultraman. Um, these, this is actually coming from the same creators that wind up doing Shin Godzilla, uh, which was a much more modern take on Godzilla uh, in the 21st century, if you will, um, and uh, with uh, fantastic special effects amazing um uh, storyline details uh it was it was actually really incredible it's probably one of my more impressive um godzilla movies that i've seen it, it feels very much like a remake of the very first original um godzilla movie but more uh definitely more updated and more current um and i, I love just the um the the boldness that um, Shin Godzilla actually wind up taking. So to see that they were going to be doing a Shin Ultraman movie, I was super pleased with. I think we were actually supposed to be getting this movie this summer, but unfortunately, guys, uh, according to Tokusatsu Network, uh, they're letting us know that the release has in fact been delayed. So let's go ahead and get into this, guys. And I will say this, if you guys are big Godzilla fans, 
and you have not had the opportunity to check out Shin Godzilla, please do yourselves a favor. You will not be disappointed, okay? Uh, this says uh, Shin Ultraman, though, release has been delayed. Uh, it says in an official English statement, um, the production company has confirmed that production delays have caused Shin Ultraman's early summer 2021 release to be canceled. A new release schedule has yet to be announced. Ugh, this type of stuff always worries me. It says due to delays in the production schedule caused by COVID-19, uh, we will not be releasing Shin Ultraman in the theaters in summer of 2021 as planned and will instead formulate a new release schedule. Our staff members are earnestly working on the production we hope that you continue to look forward to its release it says in its statement um they related sympathies to the victims of COVID 19 and, and and its gratitude to healthcare and essential workers uh further updates on the release schedule will be announced via the official production official website and accounts eventually um so yeah if you guys have not had the opportunity to check out the trailer Oh, is it not posted? Oh, okay. I'll just put it up there real quick. Um, I, I was really looking forward to this. Um, I, it looks great. Visually, it looks great. It definitely looks like they're certainly paying attention to detail. I've been a really big fan of what the writer and the director for Shin Ultraman and Shin Godzilla have truly, truly put together. Um, I really want to see this in live action. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, I feel like this is something that we've been dealing with in all of 2020. You know, the constant delays and things like that. It still rolls over to here into 2020. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that even though they're not going to meet their uh, their mark for um, even though they're not going to quite meet their mark when it comes to their date that they certainly had set a part of me is hoping that maybe this comes in fall maybe the holiday season uh, of 2021 um if i did have an issue though when it comes to the trailer i did think that while the monster cgi looked breathtaking um i was a little bit concerned about the ultraman design itself um so i'm kind of hoping that a lot of that's based off of the delays that they've had Maybe some of the graphics haven't fully been fully rendered as of yet. So I'm hoping that um, they do take this time in putting this movie together uh, and, and really making sure that uh, everything is just tight and just looking as clean uh, as possible. So I'm really hoping that they're taking this time to um, really clean up their movie. But um, I'm really excited for this. There's no new release date. Um, hopefully, we'll get some. We'll get one here in the next couple of uh, months or so. Um, but I'm kind of curious to what, know what you guys think. Have you had the ch chance to check out Shin Godzilla? And if not, are you interested in checking out Shin Ultraman? A much more modern take on uh, uh, Ultraman's first appearance here. So I'm really, really excited to see what we have in store, guys. Um, all right. And with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move over to some common writer news for you guys because, guys, this year is in fact the 50th anniversary of Common Rider. Is that that's crazy? I hard to imagine. Uh, and in preparation for Common Rider's 50th anniversary, they are in fact going to be having a Common a Rider week, going to be starting from April. Third, all the way to uh, April 10th as well. So get out your par party favors, your party hats, your balloons. Uh, Common Rider is, in fact, getting celebrated 50 years, guys. That's unbelievable to me. And to think that Super Sentai is slowly creeping up on them as well, uh, since this is the 45th anniversary, also, it's just amazing that a, a franchise and an IP even sticks around that long to still be relevant in, in, in culture and in society and things like that. Um, so I, I just find that uh, incredibly fascinating. And though while I'm not necessarily the biggest common writer fan, not because I haven't liked what I've seen, it's just so much stuff that I'm into that common writer sometimes tends to fall by the wayside for me. I just I, I'm I, there's so many television shows I watch, so many movies that I watch, uh so much wrestling that I watch from time to time, right? I, I definitely keep myself busy with a lot of content. Um so sometimes common writer for me personally doesn't necessarily make my cut to go ahead and watch, but the stuff that I have watched I've really enjoyed. In fact, we have common writer say Saber here on our uh, our channel for you guys. Uh, Stewart does weekly reviews for Common Rider Saber as well. Um, and apparently, according to him, the series is kind of turning around uh, compared to what it certainly was like when it certainly first started. So now it even has me a little bit intrigued as to like, damn, maybe I should go ahead and check out Saber. Um, I'm still trying to go back and check out Zero One. So uh, my potential for wanting to get involved with Common Rider is certainly there for sure. Um, and maybe Rider Week is the opportunity for me to really sink my teeth.
teeth into where we're going to be getting. So since we uh, since they are celebrating the 50th anniversary this year for Common Rider, uh, let's see what they actually have in store. Uh, let's see what details they actually give us for this uh, Rider Week here. This comes to us from tokunation.com. Uh, let's see here. It says, uh, celebra uh, celebrate 50 years of Common Rider with Common Rider Week. Uh, 2021 will be the 50th anniversary of the franchise, and Team Common Rider will be celebrating in a big way. April 3rd through the 10th has officially been designated Common Rider Week, a series of celebrations, live streams dedicated to the Common Rider franchise. The live streams will work in collaboration with the Toei uh, Tokusatsu world channel on youtube it does state that um common rider week will feature special guests movie premieres and possibly some surprising announcements for rider fans as well um you know i i i did i do think that i wind up um recently uh reading something here where they're supposed to be um doing an official sub for a common rider what is it z z o Z zero V O. I can't remember what movie it certainly was, but they uh, they're going to be doing uh, official subtitles for it. It wouldn't surprise me if they actually dropped that on the Toby Tokusatsu World Channel over on YouTube as well. I'm kind of hoping that maybe some of these uh, special announcements are either maybe a reveal of um, the upcoming. Uh, common writer series right i don't know if they've already started taking out trademarks or anything like that yet i mean i feel like what we're like halfway through maybe that common writer series as of right now so I'm not really sure when common writer reveals those type of announcements um when it comes to going into a new season or not um, but maybe we could have some sort of a special announcements along that way i do want to see if they're also going to be releasing more common writer series with english subtitles for people to be able to go ahead and get uh, on board with like I, I i just i just hope it's not a trickle trickling out effect right like here's a couple of episodes no like can i just get a full-on series like two full-on series that's just completely sub you know english um, subtitled type of thing um so i'm really looking forward to see what they have in store from the guest stars to the movie premieres and some of these announcements uh it should be pretty fun for you uh common writer uh fans out there as well so um i'm pretty sure maybe some of that stuff will highlight um on that uh that weekend if you will let me see that says the third through the 10th right so yeah, that's from that's a Saturday to a Saturday. So if anything, uh, if they have any announcements next Saturday, we'll definitely go ahead and bring those to you guys. Uh, and then any other announcements throughout the week leading up into the 10th, we'll also go ahead and bring those announcements to you guys as well. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But um, we got more. Well, while, while we're not even at Ranger uh, at uh, Common Rider Week as of yet, we do have more announcements uh, for you guys in regards to Common Rider. And this one actually in regards to Common Rider Zero One, as we do have ourselves a movie certainly headed our way. Uh, again, Common Rider um, Zero One is definitely a series that I was really impressed with the first few episodes that I watched. I want to say I definitely made it into the very early double digits, maybe like 10, maybe episodes 10 or 11 or something along those lines. Uh, I was really fascinated and really enjoyed the main character. I thought the special effects were incredible. Probably one of the coolest, probably one of the coolest for me, costumes designs for a common writer i've seen um this really just kind of took me aback um and uh, not only zero one's costume but also the vulcan and valkyrie costumes are probably some of my favorite designs in regards to it while i, while I don't collect action figures i would love a, a, S, a sf figwarts or sh figwarts uh of a vulcan and valkyrie or a, a freaking statue i think they're just absolutely breathtaking to be honest with you but it looks as though those two specifically might actually have uh, a movie uh, or a project certainly coming our way here, guys. So let's go ahead and dive into this real quick. Uh, this also comes to us from uh, Tokusatsu, uh, excuse me, uh, the Tokunation.com. It says, uh, Common Rider 01 Others, where we've got Vulcan and Valkyrie V Cinema project has in fact been teased. Um, so it says, uh, a new project has been revealed. The new special is titled uh, Common Rider 01 Others, uh, Common Rider Vulcan and Valkyrie, a reunion of the Ames writers. Sadly, no story details have been confirmed at the time of this particular writing, but it does have plans to be released in November 10th of this year. So as of right now, it will be uh, dropping later on this year, November 10th 
for you guys, and it's going to focus on those Ames writers uh, specifically. Um, they also did go ahead and actually release an uh, actual poster uh, for the V Cinema project as well with the sweet ass looking uh, costumes on the front. Um, it looks like he's holding her in her uh, holding her in his arms, uh, maybe badly defeated or whatever the case may be badly hurt so i'm kind of curious as to um what's going to be happening in this uh in, in this movie to say the least but i'm here for it guys i'm here for it um uh i i i did love their personalities from what i remember in the first few episodes that hard-headedness that stubborn sort of badassery of vulcan um uh, but i i and probably one of the coolest morphs uh, or henshin sequences I've seen of somebody literally punching a freaking bullet and then just forming across your body like damn that's he goes hard he goes hard for sure um so I, I'm I'm eager I'm eager to see what this zero one movie is certainly going to be all about but I want to know what your guys's level of excitement is so definitely go ahead and let me know your thoughts uh in the live chat or the comment section box below ladies and gentlemen uh, as far as common writer news uh, I, I believe that's probably going to do it for us in regards to common Rider news. We do have some Super Sentai stuff that I do want to go ahead and tackle real quick. Uh, Midwest does correct me here. Um, uh, it's pronounced Zato. Thank you. Z Z Z Zito? Whatever. You know what I mean, my Midwest. <laughs> but uh, thank you for the correction, for sure. I was like, Z-O? I don't really know how it's pronounced. That just goes to show you my disconnect with common Rider, to certainly say the least. Uh, but I, I'm really excited to see it. Uh, Enrique, you actually just brought up our next topic here, man. He says, is there going to be a Kamen Rider Saber and Zenkaiser crossover summer, summer movie coming? Yes, there certainly will be. So thank you very much for that question, guys, because um, it'll be here before we know it. Uh, Kamen Rider uh, and Zenkaiser are, in fact, going to be getting themselves uh, a movie here. Um, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm really fascinated by this matchup. Um, I feel very much like Zenkaiger is kind of already using some of the special effects um, and um, techniques that um, Kamen Rider Saber is already using. Um, so I almost feel like this might actually be a match sort of made in heaven and might actually fit rather perfectly. I, I would be interested to see what how Saber would react to the Kikainoids um, and I, I'm kind of wondering if maybe there are legends of Kikainoid sort of like in those books that uh, Common Rider Saber uh, kind of collects or uses for power ups. Like I do think that there is a really fascinating concept that might actually be able to work really well for Zenkaiju versus Common Rider um, uh, uh, Common Rider Saber. I was not expecting this collaboration, but it does seem as though we're getting these back. It's been a while, right? I feel like it's been a while since we've had Super Sentai and Common Rider actually cross over. I do recall, you know, um, after Go Kaiser uh, and continuing to watch some of the Super Sentai seasons, just seen some of the the collaborations and like the one episode sort of team ups and things like that uh even in the movies if i'm not mistaken also so uh i'm fascinated that they're actually going to be giving us one but let's go ahead and get into some of the details here and see what um was i did i ever you know what i don't even know if i damn it adam give me one second here i thought i had this up but I guess I did not. Hold on. Because I found this story on jefusion.com, but their, their scripts on their websites take forever to load. I don't know if it's just my computer or what, but um, I'm trying to see if I can actually find another page that might have actually highlighted this because i don't even think i saw it on the tokusatsu network page i don't even think they brought it up as of yet that they were going to be uh, doing that let me see if i'm yeah see i see zenkaiger spinoff stuff like they're not even talking about it on their website either which is kind of crazy um i wonder if this was just announced like 
earlier today or what, but uh, when, I, when when this page loads, I'll definitely go ahead and, and jump back into it for you guys uh, and let you know some of the details um, as to when we could certainly expect this. Um, I don't know if it had full on details as of right now, but yeah, these pages for jefusion.com just take forever to load. Like I said, I don't know if it's just a script thing, if it's mine, uh, my computer, that's just a slow to load or if it's just their page or whatever the case may be, but I'll definitely go back uh, and talk about that once uh, once that page actually does load for us. But there is another topic that I wanted to bring up with you guys today, and that is, in fact, Zenkaiser itself. Um, human forms of the Kikainoids have, in fact, been revealed for the spinoff series. Now, I believe, again, this is only like a two-parter, if I'm not mistaken, for the spinoff series where we got Zenkai Red um, um, uh, positioning themselves uh, in this particular, I think it's a spinoff series for them. Um, but uh, in the trailers that we've seen so far, they have showcased to us some of the humanoid forms of the Kikinoids. Now, whether or not these human forms will actually um, make it over into the series itself, who certainly knows, um, but it's definitely fascinating. I, I really love just getting the opportunity to see what they could potentially look like under those costumes. So let's go ahead and check this out real quick. This one is from Tokusatsu Network uh, in regards to the human forms here. So let me bring this up. Uh, human forms. There we go. So it says, um, yeah, the human forms for the Zenkaiju members have been revealed. Uh, this right here, this gentleman is uh, Katsuya Takaji. Uh, will be portraying the human form of Jiren. Uh, is that a is that a sweater he's rocking? Uh, I don't know. What is that? A scarf over his sweater too? A little. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, he previously portrayed Kazuma. Masaki and Common Rider Amazons. Ooh, okay. So people might be familiar here with uh, Katsuya Takaji uh, in regards to that. So he will be the human form for Jiren. Uh, we also have uh, Noriyuki Oashi, who will be portraying the human form for Vroom. I'm digging the glasses. <laughs> I'm digging the glasses. I love the fact that even in human form, he's rocking those glasses for us. I think that's uh, that's that's pretty fantastic, honestly. Uh, so we've got um, we've got him. Uh, we also have uh, Sakik uh, Sa Sachika Nita uh, will be portraying the human form of Majin. Uh, I believe Majin is the one that I definitely have seen in the trailer so far, um, highlighted in human form. Um, surprisingly, though, they don't have a, a photo for Gaon here. But it says, here's a synopsis. It says, uh, the Zenkaiju team features one human and four robotic life forms called Kikinoids. Unlike previous teams, the main leader of Zenkaiju is not Red, but a hero named Zenkaiser. Uh, however, appearing before the team is Zenkai Red, a hero whose color is appropriate for a Sentai leader. A competition for leadership begins white or red. It says um, uh, Zenkai will be uh, Zenkai Red will be portrayed by uh, Daiki Icy, who performed the opening theme song for Tokyuja. Ooh, very nice. Likewise, the spinoff will feature a human form for gown portrayed by Hiroki. Sasamori. So Hiroki Sasamori will be portraying uh, for Gown, but no um, no photo for him, unfortunately, here. It says, lastly, uh, normal villain Wald uh, will also appear in the film. They resemble um, super villain Wald, an enemy character who appeared in um, Zenkaiju the movie Great Gathering, voiced by uh, Tomokazu Seki who also performed the Gokaiger equipment voice and narration. So I am really fascinated by uh, Daiki Icy here, who's going to be uh, Zenkai Red. The fact that he is a musician, uh, did the opening theme song for Tokyuja, which if you ask me is one of my favorites, um, if not my favorite um, Super Sentai theme that we've had. I I'm fascinated the fact that they're making him a Zenkai Red. How long he plans on sticking around, um, I have no idea, but I I'm really excited to see this, um, this spinoff series. I believe it's already begun. I believe they already had the sec the first episode. I wouldn't be surprised if the second episode was this weekend. Also, I am kind of curious if they're going to be doing these into live um, into English subtitles because I would love to go ahead and actually revisit, uh, you know, actually visit these episodes and check them out and do reviews for you guys. So over the next couple of weeks, if you guys do see English subtitles for this. Um, uh, Zenkai Red sort of spinoff that we're getting, please go ahead and um, uh, let me know um, by contacting me via email or on Twitter or whatever the case may be because I do want to go ahead and actually uh, record these um, record reviews for both of these episodes when we get the opportunity. But um, yeah, guys, 
Zenkai Jira, uh, Zenkai Red is certainly here, uh, and we're definitely going to be getting ourselves some great, um, some great um, uh, humanoid forms for them also. And again, it is something that I kind of hope actually carries over to the series itself, uh, whether it be in flashback mode, even if this is just a spinoff series and they're just turned into humans for two episodes. I think that would be cool too. But you know, it j just to be able to have that further connection with the Kikinoids, I think will really go a long way. Honestly, guys. Um, all right. And I think other than that, guys, I think that'll probably do it for us here. Um, don't worry. I will go back to that Zenkaiju news here in a minute, but I'm still waiting for, um, I did find the article. I'm just waiting for that article to load. Once it loads, then we'll go ahead and get back into it. But if anything, as of right now, uh, we will go ahead and transition over to your live viewer questions, guys. Um, hopefully you guys have sent them over. If you haven't, please go ahead and do so as of right now. Um, let's see here. Go ahead and pull this up. <clears throat> and before I get into that, let me see what some of you guys are saying in here. Uh, Blossom. Uh, says again, Saber is rocking it with the books and swords. Thomas, the coolest writer I've I've, I've, I've ever saw. Hot too. <laughs> Glad you're liking it, Blossom. I feel like even in some of the comment sections for our common writer Saber reviews, people are starting to get on board with it again. It's starting to make that turn. You know what I mean? Goku says um, he just finished his first common writer, uh, a common writer game, a game. I always uh, pronounce that wrong. Um, I'm curious to know what you thought about it, Goku. Uh, Goku. Um, so in regards to my thoughts on Saber, I don't really have one right now. It's not a series that I've personally kept up with, but our reviewer for Stuart, Stuart certainly has kept up with it. Um, our other co-host, um, if you want to go ahead and check out some of his thoughts on the series, you certainly can. Again, we do have our, um, our common writer Saber reviews up on our YouTube page. Okay, so let me see. Okay, here we go. Going back to um that topic beforehand. Yeah, the idea of common rider uh and Zenkaja. Let, let me go to jefusion.com here. Let me pull this up and show you what they're saying. I don't think there's too much information in regards to it either. Um Common Rider Saber plus Sentai Zenkaja crossover movie a uh, movie announced. Uh it was announced by Toei that a crossover uh is on its way this summer. So they're going to do something this summer with both of these crews here. Uh, the 2021 road show. So it's definitely happening this year. The temporary title of the movie is also revealed along with the catchphrase surprise to everyone, a new dawn. Uh, it's been a long time since we've seen a uh, team up episodes in movies between writers uh, and super sentai. And it looks like Toei is uh, bringing it back once again. I'm really glad that they are. Uh, this says here's their source. Uh, Nihon Hero. Let's see what they're they say anything else in regards to it. Um, yeah, it just says the same thing. Uh, it's been years since Super Sentai, uh, since Super Sentai ties in movies, and it's also been years since crossover episodes, um, from the television series. But it looks like we're gonna see a crossover between the two. Um, yeah, this just talk about the catchphrase a little bit, and they just say a summer crossover film between the two as well. So, um, yeah, so there's very little details in regards to it, no uh, actual plot summary, um, in, in regards to it. But, um, the fact that it has been years for Toei since they've actually done a big uh, movie crossover between these two franchises, um, and even uh, something for the television series itself, uh, I think this is, a, I think this is a big, um, a big move by them. And again, I do think that there's a lot of connections here, especially with just the techniques and special effects and how they bring their characters to life. Um, I, I do think that there, there might be a pretty creative and pretty unique way uh, that we'll see these two characters or these two teams um, or these two IPs, I should say, uh, actually uh, come together. So I'm actually really, really looking forward to that, guys. I really am. 
All right. Let's see here. Let me go ahead and jump into your questions now and then we'll finish. We'll wrap this up. Let's see here. All right. So we've got quite a few. Let's see. Uh, this comes from Marcelino Vasquez. What's up, Marcelino? A um, couple questions. This is actually from last week. I think you might have sent this after the show went live. Yeah, this was sent around three o'clock. Um, so after we after we finished. Uh, in my personal opinion, Lord Zed is overrated. Uh, he first state, uh, started out as a badass, but then turned into com a comedic chump. I can never take him seriously, and I think there are better villains who deserve being called the number one villain of all time. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, I definitely, definitely respect your opinion. Um, I, I don't, I, I probably can't say he's overrated for me personally. Um, yeah, he's always been one of, one of probably one of the scarier ones for me. Also, I love what Ryan Parrott's doing with him as far as comic book, uh, comic book adaption of the character goes. Uh, I think Lord Zed is just, I wouldn't say he's overrated so much as he is just iconic. You know, the impact that he certainly had in this world, the amazing voice actor that always, you know, um, he, he, just that that gnarly kind of um, that the voice that he was able to kind of produce and stuff. Um, yeah, I always see Lord Zed as a very iconic character. I'm sure that there are some really great villains out there for sure. But when you talk about just um, what a character represents, what they've done, how they look, how they make people feel, right? I think um, Lord Zed, I think, just really hits all the buttons for a lot of people. Um, um, and so, yeah, I, I can't really see him as overrated, even when he did get into his uh, comedic thing, com comedic aspects a little bit uh, and teamed up with Rita a lot. I thought they had some pretty good uh, plans and things like that. But even just Lord Zed being solo, um, even that time period of him being solo by himself was super impactful. Um, so, um, it, hey, cool if you feel that way. Uh, I just, uh, I, I definitely don't. I do think that he he's left a great impact, though. Um, what are some of your favorite moments in Power Rangers that don't relate to cameos, team ups, or references from the past? It has to be something the season itself brought, and not uh, dependent uh, on the past. Uh, some of my favorite moments in Power Rangers. God, there's quite a few. You know, one of the one. I don't know why this. <laughs> I don't know why this hits me. One of my favorite moments, though, is um, when TJ gets introduced during uh, Forever Red. Uh, I, there's something about TJ's entrance um, that I absolutely love when he comes, pulls up in his sweet ass red car. You know, uh, he closes it behind him and he gets introduced by Carter as like a uh, you know, full name. Full name and everything, uh, putting some respect on that man's name. Uh, and I feel like just that moment alone, just um, kind of solidified TJ's role for me as one of my one of my favorite uh, up there with one of my favorite and iconic Reds. You know, um, the idea that even Carter put some respect on his name and understood like the impact and the importance that um, TJ had as the first sort of black uh, Red Ranger leader of a Power Ranger team. Uh, that's definitely one of my favorite moments up there for sure. It's it's small. It's not like look at that look at that action and how, how heartfelt was it. But that definitely was um, a, a, a favorite moment of mine. Seeing the passing of the Pink Ranger in Lost Galaxy and seeing Corona eventually come on to uh, pick up that mantle as well. Uh, super, one of my favorite moments also, just because that stuff has never been done before in Power Rangers, right? The idea of killing somebody off, like what? Are you kidding me? Um, that was just incredible to me, honestly. Um, so I, I, that was definitely a, a favorite of mine also. But yeah, there's, a, there's quite a few, there's quite a few. Um, what are some of the themes and motifs that Power Rangers Super Sentai I haven't done that you would like to see for future seasons? Uh, or things that you wouldn't mind seeing revisited again? I know we've done animals. I wouldn't mind doing birds, though. 
Uh, I wouldn't mind bird motif or bird theme coming back, different types of birds. I think that would be pretty epic. I, I think I just thought of that because I was just thinking of uh, Jetman the other day. Um, we were doing our Go Kaiju reaction videos. Um, just the impact that that Jetman episode certainly had on me. I was like, damn, I wouldn't mind seeing something along those lines again. Um, you know, I've seen it. I, w I would love even music. I've seen even like was the, the Jam Rangers or something like that. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that actually brought to the forefront. I've been trying to see if we would get sports. Sports would probably be a little bit difficult. Um, well, as far as adaption wise, I think if anything, if they were to adapt, like if Power Rangers were to do something sports theme, it definitely would be different sports for sure than what we wind up getting. But sports, what I think would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, there, there, there are there, there are a couple. There are a couple I would certainly wouldn't mind taking. Let's see here. We got Jessica. Um, is there a word on which Super Sentai will be adapted into Power Rangers after Dino Fury? Um, no, there is not as of right now. It's a gigantic question mark as to what's going to be adapted or if we will even have uh, some some type of adaption. It may just end up being just a, a completely original Power Rangers series, but we'll see. Um, and which Green Ranger would you like Izzy to meet one day? Oh, that's easy. Tommy. Give me Tommy. Uh, look, if, if Hector can get that green shield placed on him, uh, I'm kind of hoping that Izzy makes enough impact in this season to warrant uh, Tommy Oliver giving her a visit, to say the least. Um, so, yeah, I, I would be down with Izzy. I would heck, I would even want Izzy to meet Cena uh, from Care Major at some particular point in time, if that could certainly happen. Um, but um, who else would I probably pick? I would love to see us bump into Cam. I think Cam would be pretty cool. Uh, I would be fascinated to see how she would react around Izzy also. Um, so, yeah, those are probably the other two that I would like to see her interact with. I'm handsome, dudes. Got a couple questions. Um, have... Oh, have you watched the new episode of Super Sentai Kira Major? Oh, excuse me, uh, Zenkaiger. And what were your thoughts? So I know it's Saturday in the episode. What is that? Four? Uh, no. Episode five is probably dropping this week. I uh, have not watched it. The last episode that I did watch was Majin's um, debut. Um, and um, what were my thoughts? Um, how do I put this? I like the character work that they wind up doing for the episode. Um, the special effects, though, were pretty atrocious for me. Um, to where, like, the idea of seeing our characters in front of the green screen and things like that was just a um, little bit too jarring for me. It was hard for me to focus, hard for me to pay attention to what was kind of going on. It just felt like a messy episode. Um, so I wasn't the fan of. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. But that's not to say that I didn't appreciate or enjoy some of the aspects that the episode did provide. Uh, and for me, I really enjoyed Majin, um, really enjoyed the idea of uh, the relationship between her and Jurin also, um, the idea that they they have a connection, you know, that um, we have a, a character in Majin who has felt very much alone and, and lost, um, doesn't really know anybody here since the incident that happened on Kikaitopia and it kind of just up, uprooted her and put her on earth um so i i appreciate the idea of that type of character being lonely and uncertain as to what's going to happen to her but finding somebody very familiar that she's used to that helped kind of uh raise her i guess or raise her and the other neighborhood kids in in Jurin. i thought that was a really great connection between those two characters and there is something a little bit relatable for me in regards to majin because growing up as a kid i was super shy you know, you can even ask my my mom on occasion, like when we would go to the playground, there would be moments when we would go to the playground and I would absolutely love being out there, right? And playing on the monkey bars and on the swings and stuff. But that was always usually solo. Uh, once kids from the neighborhood started kind of coming around or the park started getting kind of full, I would kind of go, you know, kind of veer off and, and leave and stop playing and kind of go off and do my own thing. Um, so that IND of kind of needing that push um, to make you embark on things that you probably normally wouldn't, or you feel too embarrassed or too shy to do, right? Um, I kind of, I kind of enjoyed that lesson that Majin learned a little bit from her fortune telling. Uh, the idea that um, you know, fortune telling is not necessarily meant to be accurate, but more or less like 
um, some, a, a suggestion in your life and whether or not you decide to uh, pursue it is certainly on to you. And so I, I love the fact of her uh, finding things that she wants to take risks in and that's um, putting herself out there and becoming a Zen Kaiser member. So I, I did enjoy that. I did enjoy that along with the the, the Zord battle at the very end. But um, yeah, other than that, I, I was just really taken out of the episode, unfortunately. Uh, why do you think Jungle Fury and Mystic Force are very underrated seasons? You know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I will say this. Mystic Force, for me, I'm probably one of those people that underrated. Um, I, and I and which, which is crazy. I, I probably am going to have to revisit Mystic Force. I probably honestly will have to revisit Mystic Force because, you know, I was a bi I'm a big fan of fantasy. You know, I love knights and dragons and magic and things like that. And even coming out of Mystic Force, while there certainly are some characters that stood out to me as a whole, I, I it just never um, captured me like it did for some people. So I'm, I'm definitely in that category of people that under probably underrated. Uh, but Jungle Fury, I was a big fan of. I, I, I loved all the hand to hand combat we got, the the weapon selection and things like that. Um, I, I do wonder if maybe it's underrated because maybe we we've had so many animal um, themes that maybe by the time we get to um, that by the time that we get to Jungle Fury, people are maybe over the animal theme a little bit. So I, I am wondering if that's um, if if that's what it is. Great characters, but again, maybe another season that doesn't um, have huge impact. But uh, I, I I did love the characters. I did love the characters out of Jungle Fury for sure. And so glad that J Jason Smith wound up coming back. <laughs> JB says what says Theodore J Jarvis Johnson. Yeah, man, I, I I love it. I love put some respect on that man's name. Uh, I love the fact that they did. Like I think they understood and recognized the importance of 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 TJ uh, when it, what he meant to Power Rangers in general. Um, did you know that when Dino Fury was in early development, the production crew watched Real Soldier as it aired and had a hard time understanding because they had to watch the episode without any subs? What storylines do you want Dino Fury to adapt that was really good and with the Garcia siblings? Did they did they watch it with no subs? I did I maybe I missed that interview. Um, but I would be curious to know if that's true or not. Did they really watch it with no subs? Um, I'm curious if Simon Bennett or the rest of the crew mentioned that at all. Because I do I do remember them saying that they watched Real Soldier, but I was under the impression that they just watched it when the subs came out, right? Like I don't I don't know why you wouldn't. <laughs> like I don't know why you wouldn't wait for the subs to come out. Like, why would you do that to yourself? Like you just wait two, two or three more days and the, the sub versions were out there. Um, but again, I guess I guess at the end of the day, that's, that's them not pirating uh, Super Sentai. So maybe they maybe they probably did watch it without subs. I'm not quite sure. But I knew, do know that they at least watched the season. What storylines do you want Dino Fury to adapt that was really good? You know, when you ask me about good storylines from Real Soldier, I'm drawing a blank. You know, give me the Excalibur. Um, I really like the concept and the idea of the um, real soul Excalibur, the sword and the power up. I, I really would like to see that adapted. You know, I don't know what the ultimate plan is, if they're going to follow the route of real soldier and have it be, you know, this ultimate bad guy that pops up at the very end that's trying to, you know, um, uh, re-cleanse the world if you will um because that, that's where the excalibur kind of comes into play i i would love to see them adapt it i definitely would love to see them adapt that for sure um outside of that i, I really wanted the show to take its own liberties i don't need anybody to die like nada um as as emotionally and heartfelt as it certainly was i don't i don't necessarily think i need something like that so if anything maybe the excalibur storyline um I, I would probably take over but there's for me i was never really the biggest fan of real soldier so i've always said to myself if you can come up with your own original idea for an adaption for power rangers please do so there's really not too much i, I would want to see them carry over let's see here dino fury my name is carl what's up carl um what are some of your favorite Ranger couples? Ooh, Ranger couples. Jake and Gia, for sure, are up there for me. Um, they were probably the only two from the Megaforce um, group that really stood out to me. 
Um, and I always love their chemistry together on screen. So Jake and G is definitely up there as one of my favorites. You know, clearly Tommy and Kimberly are definitely up there for sure. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones that we wind up having. I always found the one in Samurai a little bit weird. Yeah, those are probably the, the one that comes to my mind first immediately that I was always impressed with. And of course, Wes and Jen. I mean, damn, those are, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't forget Wes and Jen also. Um, so those are probably some of my favorites. Uh, what aspects of Super Sentai did you like or not like over the years? Uh, Andros and Ashley. Yeah, Andros and Ashley also. Um, I don't know if I would put up there as my favorite, um, but I did like the idea of really this alien trying to get acclimated to. Um, to, to Earthling, if you will, uh, and just their differences. So there is some fun aspects for sure in regards to Andros and Ashley. So Rob says uh, Summer and Dylan were, were a great one also. Yeah, that was a good one. That's a great callback. Yeah, Jess, Justin went um, – Je uh, uh, Jess. Jen and Wes for sure for me. Uh, Jake and Gia just because of the, the fight that this man put forth to try and get this girl of his dreams. <laughs> I always, always, always thought that. Um, do you think – oh, what aspects of Super Sentai did you like and not like over the years? Um, I've never really been the biggest fan of um, – you know, they do have some weird fetishes over there. Uh, I, it's just aspects of – I don't even call them fetishes. It's just weird. It's just, it's just different. Not even weird. Just different aspects of their culture that they're really fascinated in right furry animals cats gender swapping you know um that type of stuff putting putting guys in dresses and stuff um you know if, if that's if that's humor for them that's that's perfectly fine um but th those are usually the aspects of super sentai I, uh, always difficult episodes for me to watch um because it just kind of takes me out of the episode i mean nothing wrong with it it's just I just don't get it. Like I just don't. I just don't get their fascination with those stuff because it almost feels like it's a trope, you know. Like it's it's something that they. It's almost like um, um, it's just something that almost seems to happen every season uh, or something that's super regular for them. So, um, yeah, really not the aspect. Those are some of the aspects I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of. Um, what do you think of Dino Charge as a whole? Um, did you know that in the finale of season two, when the Rangers went back in time to prevent the Earth from being destroyed, which was their fault, how does Ivan the Gold Ranger still exist if he killed Fury, uh, who earlier on trapped him in his body? That's a good question. Uh, and to be honest with you, I've never finished Dino Charge. Uh, I, I fell off on Super Dino Charge maybe about eight episodes into that second season. Uh, I just didn't come back after the hiatus. I, you know, I, I saw cliff, cliff notes, you know what I'm saying, how the season ended. But uh, for myself as a viewer, I just I did, had no care to go back to the second half of, uh, of Dino Charge. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Adrian Perez, he's got a couple questions. Uh, we know that we won't get any crossover from Dino Fury because of the pandemic, but do you think we may get some surprises? We know the actor for Steel and Commander Shaw and Beast Morphers are in New Zealand, so they could pop up and represent Beast Morphers. Oh, absolutely. We're definitely going to get some surprises in here. I'm not expecting for big blowout um, crossover events or anything like that for Dino Fury, but despite the pandemic, I would not be surprised if Simon Bennett definitely does have some surprises up his sleeve. So whether that be for familiar faces of, pe of people that solely just live in New Zealand who knows but uh, I'm I'm fully expecting um I'm fully expecting um some surprises for sure. Uh, why do you think a lot of Neo Saban era seasons were so bad and do you consider a uh, Beast Morphers a Neo Saban era season? Ooh. Um <clears throat> So I do think that they were pretty bad because of Saban himself. Um, I feel like it's become pretty, um, I don't want to say obvious, but it, I feel like more and more people have kind of been speaking up about the transition from Saban to Hasbro and really what it's done for the creative juices of um, the people behind the scenes. 
I mean, you can tell immediately, right? Um, Saban's gone before Beast Morphers, uh, and Beast Morphers is better than anything that we wind up having, I feel like, for Neo Saban. And then once Hasbro has its hands fully on it, now we've got Dino Fury, which is incredible in its own right. Um, so I, I do think that Saban certainly was the problem. Um, I wonder if there was more of a focus on toys so much as actually putting out solid material. Uh, and maybe maybe not even necessarily that, but being a little bit too, um, I don't even want to say PC or politically correct, but just, just now not allowing the creatives to take chances and just sticking to a formula that he's had for 27 something years, you know, and um, not willing to change it or rock the boat. You know what I'm saying? And that type of stuff gets really stale after a while. So it, it would not surprise me. Um, so when, when I when I think of that question as to why it was so bad, uh, I put a lot of that onus on um, on Saban himself for just really hindering people's creativity. Um, and do I consider Beast Morphers a Neo Saban series? I, I do. I do just because of the fact that it, it was – them that picked this season and it was also um chip lynn's idea um that he had this story line for a few years that he was sitting on before actually pulling the trigger on it so because of the fact that this uh, beast morphers wasn't selected by hasbro uh i do see beast morphers as a neo saban era season um, and i i look at dino fury as hasbro's first full-on series for themselves. So I would probably say Neo Saban and then maybe just an asterisk next to it uh, just for like a side note. Uh, Hasbro kicked this series ass though uh, <laughs> somewhere in there. So yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and you said, did you like the 25th anniversary episode of Power Rangers more than the legendary battle? I did actually. I did. Yeah. Um, I still don't think it was perfect, but it was certainly still, still enjoyable for me. Um, I still wish that maybe we had gotten that even extended version, if you will, with the, all the Tommy stuff in it on the actual televised version. Um, so I definitely would have liked to have seen that initially put in there, but I'm assuming that it was cut down for um, time purposes and things like that. Um, but I, I like the way that it came together. Um, it was almost like a bootleg shattered grid, if you will. Um, but uh, I, I definitely enjoyed it much better than I did the, the legendary battle for sure. Let's see here. Uh, AJ, what's up, AJ? Now that we have a full core five Dino Fury Rangers team with Javi and Izzy, has the episode stood out more after watching a few more times? I mean, the episodes always kind of stand out to me now. Uh, episode four, I mean, God, I don't even know how many times I've watched that episode already. But yeah, it continues to stand out to me more and more. So for me, I thought episode five was a, I don't want to say a step back, but definitely uh, taking a foot off the pedal a little bit, right? And giving us more of a more, um, a uh, more direct lesson of the the day, if you will, with some great representation. Um, so I definitely think it was going for something different in this episode. So uh, still solid episode, one that I definitely uh, enjoyed for sure. Um, so I, I love the um, the pace that Dino Fury is is really on right now. But um, yeah, the, the episodes continue to stand out to me more and more that I watch them. Uh, what were some of your favorite Ranger reveals? And do you wish the six Rangers were introduced earlier so we could see the characters more than only twelve episodes? I kind of answered that question a little bit already. I'm cool with the idea of, um, I I'm cool with the idea of um, having them come maybe after the hiatus. Um, so I'm perfectly okay with that, especially considering the fact that we usually will get two seasons of them, right? So not only do we get them after the first episode, after the first hiatus of the first season, but then they're all around for the entire second season as well. So, um, you know, I, I can't say only 12 episodes because we get an entire season of them also. So I'm, I'm cool with them holding off on revealing the, uh, the, the, the additional Ranger until we get back from hiatus. But I, I get the idea also of wanting to, um, place it at the very beginning of, you know, at the very end, like of the first half so that people might get excited to kind of come back to them. But I, I'm, a, I wouldn't mind pulling the trigger on the ninth or 10th episode, you know, when power Rangers does return to, to reveal them. But that's just me. Some of my favorite Ranger reveals, I mean, damn, the, the White Ranger coming out like a fucking angel out of the sky. Ah, 
you know, that was pretty badass. I always thought Jason's return as the Gold Ranger and Zeo was pretty cool. Also, um, yeah, they've got some really great favorites, um, some great Ranger reveals for sure. The Corona one I thought was was pretty awesome too. Um, I even loved Andros's first appearance in In Space when he infiltrates the dinner and then reveals himself. I thought that was pretty cool. I was like, oh, that's the Red Ranger. Okay, okay. Yeah, they got some great reveals in um, Power Ranger history. Titanium Ranger, anybody? I mean, god damn it. The list goes on and on. Uh, what was your reaction when Andros and Astronomer were actually brothers and sisters? And did you like that Caron came back for Lost Galaxy and took over as Pink Ranger? I loved it. I loved it. I actually got a chance when I went to Power Morphicon in 2014 to take a picture with both uh versions of the pink ranger from lost galaxy so i, I thought that was pretty cool i don't know how how often that type of thing happens where they both are at conventions but it was really great to kind of see them um uh, it was really great to kind of see them but i love the storyline i mean in space for me just hit me in all types of feels whether it was the ashley and andro stuff the andros and corone stuff the ecliptor stuff the 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 the, the, the zordon storyline stuff i mean it, it just that season just kicked my ass all over the place and just made it incredible. So um, I, I loved it. And I'm really even looking forward to finding out more about Astronomer's story in the upcoming Boom Studios comic book, Power Rangers Unlimited, Heir to the Darkness, which I think drops this upcoming week, guys. Um, so definitely go ahead and check that out. I believe we, we probably, if that is a one-shot, is it a one-shot or a graphic novel? I think it's a one-shot. Um but uh, if it's a one shot, we'll probably have as an early access available to our patrons uh, that Wednesday for you guys uh, and then eventually available later on in the weekend. In fact, we have actually Power Rangers issue number, was it five, I believe, um, that we just reviewed um, that we're going to be dropping for you guys later on today as well. So definitely look out for that. Um, all right, let's see here. Next couple of questions from Johnny, Johnny Marrero. He's got three questions himself. Um, oh, let me just get to this real quick. So common writer says, um, so, uh, Jude had the story for Beast Morphers before adapting Go Busters from the story that I heard from Simon Bennett. Yeah, that he he had already had a storyline in mind. If they were ever to adapt Go Busters, he had a story in mind. So it just it just happened to play out that um, that was the next season. And he's like, hey, I got just the story for it. <laughs> Trent, what's up, Trent? He says, uh, Roxy, newsflash, A plus more phenomenal is this year's awesome channel. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, don't, I wish Roxy had said that, but no, I, uh, Liana Mar Ramirez was uh, uh, fantastic to have on the show. I absolutely loved having her on the show. I really would love to have her back. Um, she's been a little bit more difficult to contact um, since then, though. Uh, but, you know, She's got a busy life. She's an inspiring actress. She's also 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 an author. Um, so she's got plenty of stuff in her life. But uh, she's from everything that I've heard, from things that she has talked about, she loved being on the show. So I definitely would love to have her back. But uh, you know, I I, I wish you would. I, I you know, it's always great to if she would say something like that for sure. Um, let's see here. Johnny's got a couple questions. What was your first? What was your favorite moment in the new Dino Fury episode? Winning attitude. Favorite moment. Uh, the morphing sequence along with Izzy fighting off Boom Tower and Mucus in order to go ahead and get her Zord uh her Zord back safely. Uh, I thought I thought that was pretty good. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that really jumped out to me. There weren't really any wow moments for me per se outside of the the Zord the not the Zord battle the um the morphing sequence and uh, and the Izzy character work that we wind up uh, really getting this week. Um, do you believe that Dino Fury will air both seasons for this year? Because I'm tired of the hiatuses. No, I'm expecting the hiatuses. Unfortunately, Johnny, I I hope there's a surprise around the corner like hey episode nine coming right after. But I I don't know. I'm thinking hiatuses too, man. Um. What do you think the first official Hasbro PR project will be after the Dino Fury adaption? Probably the movie. Probably the movie. Uh, I am wondering if the, the movie is going to then lay the groundwork for what we get afterwards, right? Like when I think of um, Jonathan Entwistle's vision, I sort of think of creating a movie, 
giving us our core three or five characters that we're introduced to for the first time, brand new characters. They maybe pick up the mantle of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for a new generation, and they create maybe their own uh, non-kid television show out of this movie, right? Um, spinoffs is the big thing these days. Um, everybody seems to be getting off a um, uh, a spinoff off of their movies, and I think that's a great way to go. So I'm kind of hoping that Hasbro uh, is paying attention to that and maybe gives us um, those characters that Jonathan Entwistle establishes from the movie into a non-kid series of their own. And then maybe based off of the lore that they um, – the lore that they wind up building in that movie, uh, maybe there is a kid show that they can produce originally um, out of that movie, uh, whether that be a new team of Rangers that we've never seen before outside of MMPR themed, um, you know, original costumes, original villains, original designs, um, that type of stuff. I wouldn't mind seeing that kind of that movie really create the lore for animated Power Rangers series and kids stuff um, as well out of that. And hell, you know, if, if I had my way, I'd bring Simon Bennett on board to that too and be like, hey, here's this idea that I have that I want to go ahead and run past you. You know, can you put this together as a showrunner? You know, uh, I would love to see what Simon Bennett could do with uh, an all original Power Rangers series. So that's kind of the impression that I'm that I'm in right now is that the movie will be there to create what else we get after Dino Fury. But, um, you know, We'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens. Maybe, they, maybe they're maybe they in the middle of adapting another Super Sentai season for all we know, and it's just going to come out of it. But I just I feel like Hasbro wants to make everything as connective as possible um, for this new uh, reimagining and reboot. Uh, so I'm feeling that that's the route that they may go. Uh, Randy, what's up, Randy? This is uh, uh, Ram Jam coming through. He says, uh, hey, Adam, how's it going? Got a, a couple questions for you. Um, what are your thoughts on all three seasons of MMPR returning to Netflix, and what can this mean for future seasons returning? Um, I'm not expecting them to return. Um, the fact that they at least put them up there, I'm wondering if that was a mistake on their part, like the idea of um, – because I thought all the seasons were supposed to be up there, and I remember checking them out, and then there was only one season of MMPR. I'm like, what the F is that all about? So I definitely do think that maybe there was some uproar or Hasbro was like, oops, Netflix, I think you took down too many seasons. So um, I'm kind of hoping that they wind up bringing um, – I, I am kind of hoping that they um, – I'm glad that they brought all of them back for sure because I think that's I think that's important. Just keep the entire series the season up there if you can. So I'm glad that they wind up doing that. But I I, I feel very confident that um, you know, they in their Hasbro's Pulse, um, was it Fan Friday or something like that? That you know, they I think they made it very clear that the past Power Rangers series will in fact be going over to their Power Rangers Kids channel, um, which will slowly be uh, unveiled. Which I. I like the idea of it going over to YouTube. I, I am scratching my head as to why it's not exactly on the also on the actual Power Ranger YouTube channel or even Hasbro's YouTube channel for that matter. Um, Cause those two have more viewers than just the kids channel. But I also don't like the idea of them slowly trickling out the seasons. Um, I personally, as a fan, just make them available to me instead of me having to kind of wait around for them to slowly be put out. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I feel future seasons definitely will be on YouTube. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if over time a series like a Beast Morphers and Dino Fury will eventually be taken off of Netflix. Like I'm sure they probably have already licensing agreements for those um, as, as it is. So those will probably be up on Netflix for a while. But once those licensing agreements are done, I wouldn't be surprised if they do move over to Power Rangers. Uh, YouTube page. Um, how are you liking Zenkaiju so far? I, I enjoy it. I, I don't mind it. I, I definitely enjoy it. Um, it hasn't hit me quite like Kara Major yet as far as it being as fun as as much fun as I certainly did. But there are really great aspects and great characters that I'm really becoming fond of. Um, I will be I'm looking forward to I do look forward to the episodes each and every week because uh, there is a fun dynamic that I appreciate. So I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I'm not going to go over the over the moon and say it's excellent. It's the best thing that I've seen. I'm not, I'm not going to jump into all that hyperbole right now. So I, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. 
Um, do you think Boom Studios would ever feature Super Sentai and Power Ranger comic books? They have to a certain extent. Um, if in the upcoming Power Rangers Unlimited, uh, Air to the Darkness, we see uh, Astronomer taking out the Flashman group, right? Not a team that we've really seen in Power Rangers before, with the exception of maybe Megaforce very briefly, right? But no true explanation. So it's it's pretty trippy to, to see. And I think that they also, uh, Boom Studios, I think actually might have tackled another team very early on in um, uh, in the Power Ranger comic books. But uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But I know Flashman is not the first time that they've that they've brought them in. Um, but yeah, so um, so yeah, they they definitely have. I so yeah, I I I enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Like I want to see I want to see Astronomer face off against Flashman. Uh, I want to see exactly how she holds her own. I think they're called Power Rangers Prism though. Um, but they so they have taken their liberties and and used some of these uh, pre MMPR. Uh, Sentai seasons um, that we've seen very briefly in um, in Megaforce utilized. Uh, Doomsday, you've got a couple questions too. I don't like that Chance Perez doesn't have to get rid of his musical talent. Wait, don't you? Oh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I read that wrong, Doomsday. I'm sorry. Don't you like that Chance Perez doesn't have to get rid of his musical talent when playing the Black Ranger? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think they definitely probably brought him on board because of his musical talent, you know? Um, maybe that's uh, an aspect of the character that they really wanted to tackle. And maybe the idea of Chance Perez being as talented as he is was a great opportunity for him to really, really be able to shine and showcase his talent, right? Um, you want these actors to be able to feel comfortable maybe being themselves, but heightened version of, versions of themselves. And so I, I, I love the fact that we even see Chance in his very first episode as Javi, not only playing the harmonica, but also wanting to get that guitar, you know, instruments that most people probably don't even have or probably don't even really play that much right but there's something about that musical soul that ha that hobby has uh that it just screams chance perez to me um whenever i see him so yeah i'm really glad that that's um his musical talent is being utilized uh on the show for sure which ninja steel ranger or actor was the most was your favorite one um i actually really like sarah uh, not because uh, Christiane is gorgeous, but I, I really enjoyed Sarah in here. I especially even loved her connections with her mom that we wind up seeing a couple times as well. Um, I, I really enjoyed what she brought, uh, what, what she wind up bringing to the show. Her and um, uh, Preston, uh, her and Preston were probably my two favorites on the show, honestly. Yeah, those are definitely my two favorites. Sarah and Preston were probably my two favorite of the season. Um, and last, lastly, don't you think that Jake makes the best comic relief than Early and Mr. Burley from Megaforce or vice versa? <laughs> Mr. Burley. Oh, God. It, it always remind me like a whacked out Albert Einstein whenever I think of uh, – <laughs> Mr. Burley, but no, I I do think that Jake does make a a great comic relief. I I thought he I thought he brought um a great flair to the to the episode. I actually met him, and I think I took a picture with him at Power Morphicon 2014 when he was there. Uh, him and the entire crew. I think I bumped into him uh, just walking walking down the hallways. Uh, super super nice guy. Huge smile on his face. Arm, arm around all the fans he was taking pictures with. He he definitely looked like he was uh, fun, having a fun time being there for sure. But yeah, no, I, I love Jake being uh, the comic relief for that show. Uh, L'Oreal. L'Oreal's got a couple questions here. Uh, let's see here. Um, doesn't the next episode of Dino Fury um, give vibes of that MMPR episode Calamity Kimberly. It's been a while since I've seen Calamity Kimberly, so I might have to go back and check it out. But if you think so, then then yeah, why not? Uh, what is what's the best part about Dino Fury today? Um, I think the while while my favorite scenes and moments were certainly um, the morphing sequence along with you know Izzy fighting um, off Boom Tower. Um, as far as like my best part 
Um, I really, I do, I did love the message. Uh, I thought the message just really came across very well in here about the idea of winning, not being everything. Um, sometimes helping others certainly is right. Um, pick and choose your battles, but uh, no, I, I did love, I, I did love that message of, um, winning is not as important, not always the most important thing in the world. Um, how did it be, how did, how would it be? If the Zen Kaijers were the ones in charge of historic archives for the Power Rangers history, since the unadapted Sentais are also part of the council. I'm confused. How how would it be if the Zen Kaijers were the ones in charge of the historic archives for the Power Ranger history, since the unadapted Sentai are also part of the council? I have no idea, L'Oreal. I'm I'm drawing a blank on that question. I'm so sorry. Um, are you talking about if they were like adapted into Power Rangers, them being the historic in charge of historical archives? I mean, I guess that's cool. I'm just not understanding the question fully, Laurel. I'm sorry. Um, all right, guys. Um, other than that, I will let me go ahead and jump into some what you guys are saying. Uh, AJ does say, um, chance being a musician on Dino Fury is very similar to the MMPR cast when they auditioned their professions uh, made it to their characters. Uh, yeah, that, that it does kind of roll off like that, doesn't it? Uh, that's pretty. That's pretty brilliant. Um, all right, guys. Um, I think other than that, uh, that's probably going to go ahead and actually do it for us here today since we are almost at the two and a half mark. Uh, but listen, guys, uh, as always, I love having you all here with us every weekend going live at noon central time to talk not only Dino Fury episodes, but everything in regards to Ranger Nation and Tokusatsu for you fans. So thank you very much, guys, for certainly uh, gracing us with uh, with uh, your presence as always. Uh, we certainly will be back. Um, if you guys are big Marvel and DC fans, um, don't worry. We definitely will. We'll be having a uh, A plus hero report tomorrow for you guys live at noon central time every Sunday. So check us out on A plus hero reports YouTube channel whenever you get the opportunity. Um, but other than that, guys, that's going to go ahead and do it for me here. So um, do us a favor, guys. Um, if you haven't um, subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button along with that bell notification. Uh, if you're in the live chat, especially if you join us on a weekly basis, if you love our content and enjoyed this week's episode, hit that like button, guys. Give us that big thumbs up. And if you would like to go ahead and follow us on on social media you can also do that right here at a plus opinions very active over on twitter as well as facebook and you can also catch us over on instagram as well as twitch for you gamers as well guys but um, other than that that's going to do it for us here so do me a big favor as always take care of yourselves take care of each other and as always keep it a plus may the power protect you i'll talk to you guys later bye